Welcome. For those of you who've watched previous episodes, at the beginning of each of these, I like to feature a new uh, uh, charity group that this episode is going to be fundraising for. In this particular case, it's Wounded Warriors uh, Project. Now, Wounded Warriors take care of, um, well, wounded veterans and their families, and they do a lot of outreach and uh, rehabilitation. So if that's something that's meaningful to you, if it's something that you are uh, looking uh, toward, uh, you know, donating money toward, uh, you can definitely do that right here in the live chat feed or after the fact, I believe there's still going to be a link available. So, uh, you know, whatever you're able and comfortable to give, if you're willing, uh, we definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for your support of this uh, wonderful organization. I will never see a dime of it. It all goes directly to them. And let's start the show. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. Today is the third of our four-part saga system, Dragonlance 5th Age minigame called Forget the Kender. It is Braca Dark Ember the 19th. My name is Adam. Now I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below and remind you that you can always pick up Dragonlance gaming materials, even 5th Age, 5th Age, 5th Edition Dungeons and & Dragons and Dragonlance materials uh, by using the links in the description below. And uh, I thank you for doing so because it just helps support the channel. So, previously on Forget the Kender. After returning with Gareth Falston, the guard, to the Kender Terry Whistlefist's Currish Goods Caravan, the heroes convince Heavy Heart, the chieftain of the village of Duntoll, that a force from Sable was coming. After questioning the validity of the attack, the heroes help train villagers and construct defenses for the coming battle. As they discovered the foes coming, they battled to near defeat with the town set aflame, but they fought off the first wave successfully. Upon further investigation, I'm sorry, upon further questioning whether this force truly was from Sable, Beryl, or maybe even Thunder, and the political and military consequences of those possibilities, the heroes decided to seek aid from the Knights of Salamnia in Solace. They traveled by ship as far as they could, um, uh, guarding refugees along the way into new ports to arrive uh, in order to avoid Beryl's eyes, of course, rather than traveling over land. And we pick up with the heroes on the road to Solace. Uh, let's have every one of these wonderful heroes introduce themselves before we start. Anik? Uh, yes, hi. I am I play Anik Overlook, Anik the Nearsighted, Arrow Catcher, Come Straw please. Slayer, oh my God. Master of the Dinner Table. He is a uh, Kender who just wants to be a knight, and he's uh, trying his best, even though he's uh, often uh, pretty terrible at it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Verkin. Yeah, so I will be playing Verkin Bumblebum. She is a dwarf fighter cleric. Nice. Torndil? <laughs> uh, hi, my name's Derek. I'm playing Torndil, the half-elf bardic ex-cleric of Branchala, who lost his faith, lost his family, and uh, has a drinking problem. All right, and last but not least, Angor. Greetings. I will be playing... Angor, the former mercenary captain of the Diamond Company, uh, traveling uh, many campaigns, battles, uh, finally uh, gaining very uh, great amounts of renown until a crushing defeat uh, decimated uh, what he had built. And now he's kind of lost trying to rebuild his reputation and uh, esteem once again and uh, countering the venture where he can find it. All right. So you've all left new ports. And you're on the road north to Solace. Uh, if we look at this map here, you can see that, uh, you know, you've got about a day's journey to get there. Uh, in this time, the women, children, and elderly are taking care of uh, their own. Uh, these are, of course, refugees from Duntoll that you've been escorting this entire way. Uh, and you guys are just on the road. Uh, the, you know, you're right next to the sea at this point. And so the winds are, are whipping up a lot of uh, really cold, chill wind off of the new sea itself. Um, you're getting these wonderful, fresh scents of not just the, the marketplaces and new ports, um, but also just, I don't know if you guys are into fish or if your character's into fish, but just the natural sense of the ocean itself and, uh, you know, 
a, a lot of different vendors barbecuing and, and just doing outdoor cooking uh, for sailors and, and merchants and such. So uh, it's a vibrant place of activity. And of course, because this is a port town, it is bustling. And so trying to wrangle everyone together and make sure that all of the refugees are following you in the right direction is going to be a bit of a challenge. And I'm going to have to require each of you to please give me a check. So I don't know. I, I suppose a, uh, I don't know. You let me know what ability you think you could uh, benefit with, but let's start with presence. So let's go with Angor. Uh, give me a presence check, please. Great. Uh, Ah, no. Uh, do you have a card? Let's. Ah. Did that work? I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't I'm see trying anything. to. Where is he? <laughs> there we go. Oh, right. The so that's uh, nine. Yep. Uh, Trump. There's eleven. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, you do a really good job of uh, corralling everyone, uh, just herding cats ostensibly with this many people. You've got about 57 uh, different refugees with you. Um, and so, you know, maybe consider using some other of the team members, uh, you know, to try to make sure everyone is in line, help the people who need help. Um, how would you like to deploy the, the team in order to uh, manage this? Uh, right. I would like uh, turn down Birkin. Just keep an eye right about the middle of the caravan. Just uh, make sure nobody's uh, veering off. Just keep your eyes left and right. Make sure nobody's uh, getting distracted. Go into the stalls. We want to keep moving at a decent pace. And uh, Anik, if you could uh, go to the rear, just uh, you're good with children. Uh, just make sure that none of them fall behind. Uh, if you hear anybody for their parents, just make sure that they're called out. Uh, what we do, folks, just keep a good steady pace. Don't need to rush this. We're safe now, but we need to keep everybody together and let's get through to the other side. Okay, so in that case, I would like to get a um, Verkin, if you could give me a perception check to make sure you're keeping an eye on the, the large body group of people. All right. Colin, can you recover your card? Oh, sorry, I'm, I was trying to delete the one off the table. It's okay. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> So, 13, that is Trump, so I'm going to draw another card. 18. 18, wow. Yeah, so immediately you notice that there is an elderly man who is trying to support his uh, presumably elderly wife, but just another elderly woman, and uh, he sort of takes a bit of a stumble and fall, and you noticing this can you know approach and assist him uh, in any way uh, that you see fit. An elderly man. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to rush over to the man and offer my arm to him. Are you okay, sir? Thank you. I, he, like, grabs a hold of your shoulder and sort of uses you as almost like a like a, a crutch, you know, because <laughs> your height is, uh, you know, just enough for him to sort of lean his arm on. He's like, thank you so very much. I, I was a little seasick on the boat and with all the activity I'm not used to so many sights and sounds it's a little bit disoriented uh, disorienting uh, me and my wife we're doing our best to keep up but I'm not sure we can go much further why, why can't we just stay here in Newports it's, it's closer to our home and certainly they could find some lodging for us here don't you think uh, I think it's best for all of us to keep together and to uh keep the pace moving along here. Uh, let me get you some water. Do you think that would help? I find that wonderfully refreshing. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to offer him my water skin okay. to drink from. Yeah, he takes a small sip and he looks at you leaning it toward uh, the woman, his wife, next to him, you know, kind of asking you for permission to give it to her without actually asking anything. He's just looking at you, like, leaning it over to her. So I nod, yes. Okay. So Please. he gives it to her. She takes a sip and, uh, you know, she just kind of leans down and gives you a sort of a half hug and says, bless your little heart. I really do appreciate your help. And uh, he gives you back your water skin and uh, they seem refreshed. Um, Torndale, can I get a perception check from you? 
Sure, let's do this. Um, question before I give play my card. Yeah. When was the last time I had a drink? Oh, a drink drink. Um, well, you were drinking on the ship, I think. So, you know, probably within eight hours. Eight hours? Okay, yeah. so it's probably... It's five o'clock okay. somewhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Parched. <laughs> well, I'm going to play this card. Um, I, I, this is for perception, right? Yeah. So um, he's a little distracted. Um, he scores a total of a 10 with his perception uh, with, with that one card. So, a yeah. A 10? He's hey, distant good. right now. Yeah. Yeah, you don't notice anything. Um, Anik, can I get a perception check from you, please? Sure. It's my specialty. Um, yeah. So he <laughs> has... It's a five total. A five total, okay. So immediately, out of nowhere, seemingly, you hear a uh, shopkeeper screaming at the top of his lungs, Get the city guards! Get the city guards! And uh, turning to look and what's going on, he's holding uh, one of the young kids from your caravan and just shaking him. The kid's head is just flopping back and forth. He's like, you little thief! You keep your dirty little barbarian hands off of my goods! You don't deserve to be here! And kind of throws him to the ground. All right, so, so Anik uh, rushes over uh, to the kid and says, uh, are, are you okay? Are you okay? What happened? No, I'm not okay. This little rat was stealing from me. Look at him. He has one of my apples from my booth right here. Well, it looks like you have a lot of apples, and this is one tiny little kid. Don't you think you could just spare one? Guards! Apple? Guards! This kinder's in cahoots! Help! Help! It doesn't well, seem well, like anyone's coming as of yet, but you know probably someone is going to be coming. How 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 much is it for an apple? Like it's a half a copper. Would you take this ogre locket? Like what? I'm not taking anything from you. You need to stay away from me, Kender. I don't want any you need to stay away from my booth, away from all my possessions, just arm's length distance at the minimum. You start to see uh, some guards walking up from the port side, uh, coming toward the little uh, merchant stands where you guys are right now. Does anyone else want to do anything? Um, do I hear this? I, then? Oh yeah, I, everyone hears. Yeah, this. I was supposed to say, how far how far is this caravan stretched? Because uh, well, this many people, you know, you're, you know, you're you're I don't know, maybe a hundred yards up the road or something, but you can definitely hear the screaming. I mean, it's it's there's a regular din of just activity. You know, people calling out and, you know, you can hear fishmongers sort of counting uh, numbers out loud, you know, counting barrels of fish and stuff. But ultimately, this guy is screaming. So you definitely hear it. Does Anik have any actual money? Yeah, of course. Um, all right. So Anik wants to pay uh, double what it normally costs and he wants to give the money for the for the apple. All right. So the guards show up They're like, what's the problem? He's like. He was stealing from me. This little street rat doesn't even deserve to live. Look at him. He's just a measly little barbarian scum. And uh, the guards looking down, they're like, the Kender? He's like, no, the rat next to him. And the kid's just like sort of getting up, sort of dusting himself off after being thrown. His, you know, he's sort of reaching for his neck. It aches. This is when you uh, reach into your pocket and give him double the, the amount, which is a copper piece. Um, the guards are like, well, it looks like there's not any problem right now, is there? And he's like, Ugh. Make sure to keep that kid's dirty little mitts away from my goods. And he takes the piece and he turns around and walks away. And the guards are just like, you guys better get out of town. Do I, uh, how much money do I have? Because I'm not, uh, it's I abstract. put myself it's, into a pauper It's not state. as literal. I mean, if you put yourself in a pauper state, then you have what you, you know, would have. Like, you, you make this choice because you, you have potential of having the resources as your background. But it's kind of up to you. I walk up to yeah. the shopkeeper and I just tell him, I pull everything out of my pocket that I have and I just basically say, I'll take all the apples this will buy. His <laughs> eyes go really wide. He's like, you got, you got it. Okay. Uh, um, would you like the crates with them or do you want bags? Um, yes, whatever you can do to help us so we have this. We have a few days journey, so... It'd be good for us to have some extra provisions and ways to carry them, yes. Good, sir, absolutely. He gets a bunch of bags, ties them off, and uh, gives you some string around him. So if someone wants to drape him around a shoulder or something, or if you guys have backpacks or anything, you can put the bags in the backpack. But you've got like five or six 
sacks of uh, a fruit, you know, mostly apples, but, you know, some plums and stuff like that. Okay, is the little boy, is that Slash? No. No, okay. I go to the little boy with one of the uh, uh, ba smaller bags, and I just hand it to him and say, here you go, buddy. Take this back to your to your family. Make sure you share it with your friends. He's like, thank you so much. He just hugs it because he's, you know, even as a small bag for you, it's big for him. So he's like sort of walking like this <laughs> away with this big bag of apples. Uh, and, you know, his mom is you know, comes over and tries to help him, and she just looks up. He's like, may the plains warriors bless your path. On my head. Okay. Is there anything else you guys want to do on this? Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to yeah, for a little bit. Right, everyone, keep together. Keep your family together. Let's get through here first. Then we'll look at provisions. But for now, keep moving. Okay, I'm going to take this card off the table. I just walk over and I, um, I look to Angor and I say, I just wanted to buy some good faith. Hopefully, so maybe that will but, spread. Um, this is how trouble starts. Let's get to a safe place, away from the populace. Then we can send people back and get provisions. We just need to get through this part first because uh, kids don't understand. This is completely different. They, these ports can be dangerous and they don't care whether you're young or old. Let's, let's get through this. Yeah, well, there's also the huge well, disparity between the fact that these are Plains people. You know, they, they're not used to the cluster that you guys are in right now. So it is very disorienting. It's like, you know, if, if you grew up in a very quiet town and you went to New York City, you know, it's just like everything is just a lot to take in. How many miles are we looking at? Like 50 miles or so to Solace? Yeah, but well, we just need to get out of the town first. We right. need to get to the outskirts so we can corral everybody. Then we can go back, send people back with a wagon, get some provisions before we move further. But for now, so that this sort of thing doesn't happen, we just need to keep moving at a good pace just to get out of um, temptation or harm's way. Yeah. Because it's a uh, collision of cultures here. Yeah, so it's going to take well, you a this? little over a day to get there. If you do a forced march through the, the evening, you can make you can make it to Solace in time. Like, well, I'm going to start playing a marching song or a wandering song. <laughs> um, wander, wander all over the town. Um, our 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 meat is, our, our our breaded is white and our meat is brown, and just kind of get people going uh, uh, going forward and keep them moving at it and try to keep the pace up. Nice. All right. Um, can I get a uh, a, a well, I don't know what, what would that be like a spirit check to see how well you do. Okay. Let's see. So I'm gonna play this one. That will give me a twelve plus it's Trump, right? Uh, so, I can't see the card, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's, in, it's right here in the yes, middle. It's a five heart. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And I'll draw another one. And I get another three on top of that. So that will be a total of 15. Oh, yeah. So you do a really good job. Uh, everyone seems to just sort of walk to the, the beat of uh, the, the music that you're, you're playing. And they're enjoying the lyrics. And, you know, you can hear some people sort of humming their own, uh, you know, old cultural songs from, you know, when they grew up or, or maybe some traveling tunes as you go up and down this, uh, you know, rather long uh, uh, group of people. Uh, everyone's enjoying it and you sort of lift everyone's spirit appropriately. You guys get out of Newports. Is there anything you wanted to do before we just sort of time jump here? I think Anik just wanted to talk to Torindel for a sec between songs. So, so Attic walks up and he says, uh, hey, Torindel, I just wanted to talk to you about something. You know, this this being a knight thing, is it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. You know, I, I thought it would all be like riding into battle and glory and don't even get me started on how hard it is to ride a, a horse. You know, would it kill my father to get me a pony? But it, it's not like that at all, you know? You have to make tough decisions and you're responsible for other people's lives. You know, to be honest, I thought about leaving and just like, going away from this quest, leaving it all behind. But then, you know, that feeling I got when I helped Slash, you know, my future squire, <laughs> and I helped find his sister, Kylie, but, you know, that, that feeling made me feel like maybe, you know, I'm, I'm doing the right thing and I'm where I'm supposed to be, you know, like it's all worth it, you know? Is that what it was like for you? You know, is that when, you know, while you became a, a cleric of Branch Alada? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yes, uh, 
the thing is, uh, when Ranchala was uh, was here and giving us her, her guidance, the music that she taught, you must follow it and follow your heart. All of our hearts beat to her drum, um, to the strings of her harp. We just need to follow it. And that's the thing. I don't have, we, she's not here any longer. So we have to find our own beat and follow our own drum. So you are doing the right thing to follow your heart. Don't doubt your quest. I think you have great good in you. Even though you might be a kender and you might have sticky fingers, you still can do great things. Just remember Tasselhoff Burfoot. He's one of the most famous kender next to someone named Trap Springer, I think. I can't remember. Oh, my uncle. Uncle Trap Springer. Oh, he's your, he's your, he's your uncle? I think oh, so. There's, there's the, Here's a song about him. And I just start playing a song about Uncle Trap Springer. <laughs> Wrote a song about him. Want to hear it? Here it go. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else? Where are we right now? Uh, right now, you're just outside of Newport. You guys pro uh, cross the bridge uh, over this uh, sort of large river uh, right above Newport. Right. So even though we've got a day, just only a day's travel, I want to organize some of the stronger members of the village uh, basically, I need a group to go back uh, and get provisions. So I want to put it to everybody, uh, cover each if you have it, so that we can basically buy provisions. I also want people to check their clothing, make sure they've got property for travel, because this was all done in the rush. Uh, if this is going to be a longer expedition, obviously, make sure foot wrappings are tight. Uh, the children are, are corralled in the middle with the families. So yeah. they're looked after, stronger stronger members of the tribe, front and back. And obviously we keep a, a watch along the middle, but I need four or five members of the village to basically come back so we can go and get provisions. Awesome. My copper came from the shopkeeper. I guess he wanted to give it back to us after all. <laughs> Excellent. Amic, you are going to be the death of us. Right. Well, Nobody to be fair, he, he did shop. get his copper back, but he also got a couple extra copper. So apparently, <laughs> apparently uh, he was paying. Nobody him go near the fruit shop. <laughs> we bought him. Let's find the other side of the trading uh, right. district, and we'll get our provisions from there. Can I get a reason check from you, um, Angor? Yep. Uh, got my reasons down. This is going to be fun. Eight. Eight? Eight. I'm not a reasonable person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm solely focused. Yeah. And, so uh, as far um, as you're aware, you know that traveling from here to Sauce is an increase in elevation. Uh, we are getting late into the season. I mean, we just had a harv harvest festival nearly a week ago uh, before your travel. Um, and so you know that the weather is going to be much worse. And as you go up in elevation, there's a whole mountain range here that you're going to have to sort of um, climb up into. It is weathered road. And so it's not like you're out, you know, backpacking or hiking or anything, but it is, it is going to get cold. Once you get up in the mountains, it can drop 10 degrees or more from what you're mm -hmm. at, at down here at the sea level. So um, you are aware that, you don't know the severity that it is going to be, but you are aware that that is something that you're going to have to look forward to. So as you're getting provisions, think about getting cloaks and sort of uh, stuff to, to protect you from the weather. So like I said, the stronger members of the village, uh, I'll, I'll have that discussion with them because we need to distribute uh, what we have yeah. in terms of like look after the weaker members, make sure that they're wrapped properly. And that's, that's the whole point of sending the, the trading party back is the pick up the slack. Okay. So once that's kind of done and we know what we have, we know what we need to get, that's what we're going to buy. Okay. Based um, on my combat history, we should also get a large supply of smelling salts. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, uh, it takes about an hour for people to travel back, do all the shopping, come back um, with all the provisions. But you feel like between the food and the equipment and the gear, you're pretty convinced you can get to Solace without any major problems at all. Okay. Guess we'll start. Um, what, what sort of time? Uh, have we time to travel or is it getting dark? 
Um, it is getting, you know, it's, it's mid afternoon. Um, so, you know, after a few hours, it's going to start getting dark and stuff. But again, this is a major road. And so if you, if you just march through, you can probably get to solace if you want to march through the night. If you don't want to stress the, the elderly or the young, um, then there are sort of waypoints where you can sort of camp off the side of the road, uh, you know, in that sort of mountainous terrain, if you want to do that. I suggest make our way to the nearest waypoint and then set up camp for the night. Rather than, we don't need the, the immediate dangers past. We've got to watch. We could travel as a small party, but with a, like a contingent of refugees, we've got to go to a slower pace. And like with the elderly couple, uh, we don't want people falling by the wayside. That's, you know, there's no point killing them on the journey. Yeah. Let's make our way to the waypoint, set up camp, and we'll just keep checking out on people. That's what we all need to do. Just keep checking out on people, making sure they're okay. I'm watching out for danger. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so um, night starts to fall. You guys have been traveling uh, through the wilderness, and you do see there's a lot of people going to and from Solace. This road is really well traveled, and it, again, because of uh, Beryl Inthronox, the dragon overlord who has taken over uh, Quilinesty, this is uh, a lot of people are fleeing, so you do see a lot of elves. You see uh, half elves. You see uh, neater dwarves, which are hill dwarves. Um, you see a lot of humans going back and forth. And uh, every once in a while, you might see you know, a centaur, but primarily it's the sort of humanoid, uh, traditional humanoid races that are just traveling and migrating away from uh, you know the forests that was once their home and the the chaos that. Uh, had at one point, uh, you know, disrupted their lives once that dragon overlord took over. Uh, the next sort of group come past, I want to approach them. Okay. Sort of, oh friend, what news? What news about what? Who are you? Uh, we're just travelers, uh, just trying to get ourselves out of a bad situation. Um, what news ahead? Well, I can tell you that there's a lot more people up in Solace than there ever has been before. A lot of the refugees are taking to the town, and quite frankly, there's not enough room for everyone. Uh, most of the, the common spaces that have been built as sort of shanties inside of uh, Solace uh, uh, proper are filled, and, and most people are having to go to the outskirts of, of town, either north closer to the Plainsman's uh, territory or, or uh, west towards Crystalmere Lake. Where I are appreciate you coming that. From? Obviously, we don't want to. Uh, we're actually heading that direction, and obviously, don't want to add to the problems. Uh, our group's village was attacked, and obviously, trying to find them sanctuary. What and, village uh, is this? It was a Dunthole. Oh, that's supposed to be a free realm. If who do you know I who it was that was are, attacking? Uh, we are not one hundred percent sure yet. Uh, don't want to make accusations because that doesn't help anybody. Oh no! But it is they they. Looked like bandits, but they weren't. If they take Dunto, if they take Duntolik, then that shuts off all of the planes of dust. That means the Banasinia would probably be next. Oh my. He like leans over to his traveling companions. We must hurry up. Godspeed to you. And they just sort of uh, walk away. Picking up their pace along the way. Right, God. So we don't wanna we don't wanna march right in here because if we're gonna add in another pile of refugees, that's not gonna help our guys. So we might need to think about stopping up short. Totally up to you guys. What do you think? Well we well, need I to think, speak uh, with the Knights of Salamania. Do we Do we all did we all hear this conversation or is this something that just uh, uh Angor um heard? Uh, ang the fact is, this is such a long secret, line. You know, it was just as people were passing, so mm -hmm. obviously I'm at the head of the caravan, just scouting it, you know, scouting out. But I just approached an open conversation. I wasn't, um, I'm not whispering, if that makes sense. It's just right. But the amount of like you guys are checking, you know, the the length of this whole line and stuff. It's unlikely that you would have been right in that area, um, unless you really want to be a part of that conversation. So what we'll do, we're still heading to the first waypoint. Um, the camp up anyway, so I think we'll have a conversation then about uh, how to proceed, because don't think getting into Salamnia right. with a bunch of refugees, if that's what's happening, it's going to benefit anybody, because there's only so much infrastructure can hold. Right. Uh, you know, 
refugees. So we're not going to, we may actually cause more harm than good. Mm. But I think we'll do is when we get to the first waypoint, uh, obviously I'll discuss with the group what I've heard. Okay. So, um, as you sort of go back to the line and you're, you're sort of directing people up toward that first waypoint, you guys are raising an elevation. You can actually see the, uh, the, the difference in the, uh, not just the, the landscape itself, but also the, the type of flora that is, uh, you know, it's going from a much richer, thicker grass and bushes to more uh, scrub oak and uh, pine and aspen as you uh, sort of climb up this mountain. It's not easy going and it does tax the elderly and the young uh, significantly more than perhaps you would have anticipated simply because of everything that they've been through already um, they're just not really emotionally equipped to deal with this much exertion and so it's going much slower than you had originally anticipated even though you anticipated it to take a little bit longer um, you're seeing uh, carrion crows uh, you know it looks like there's carcasses like people are actively hunting and uh, like consuming animals and, and cutting off meat and uh, you know taking it with them and leaving carcasses behind uh, as you're going up in here. So you're seeing a lot more uh, like sort of carrion animals. You're, you're hearing wolf howls as the sun starts to set uh, on this first day. And uh, though you do see more people coming and going, there is this sense of uh, this, this ever-present sense of danger that is just building and that's when everyone hears a scream and it's one of the mothers uh, who uh, is picking herself back off the ground and you guys see a little bit of blood uh, seeping out of her side and sort of spreading as it uh, oozes out of her body and you know, it's being soaked up by the fabric of her clothes and she's just screaming trying to pull herself up. You see some uh, elderly people trying to, to grab her and pick her up and you know, young children are, are assisting as well. But uh, I'm going to need a perception check from whoever was in the back. Oh, that was me. <laughs> All right, give me a perception check. Uh. So it's a. It's your best skill. It's a three total. Really? How is yeah. that possible? <laughs> that was your highest card, a three. All right. Oh, good for you. Dear. I'm trying to stay in character. Not... Yeah, no, I got you. Um, yeah, you are just wildly distracted looking at, uh, you know, if you come across like the carcass of a, a deer or something, you're just like, that's, you know, just examining it and, and looking yeah. at shooing away crows that are sort of feasting on the remnants uh, left behind. Um, and you just don't notice anything. Uh, you can see people uh, in the, the refugees in the, the line sort of pointing back like, he went that way, he went that way. And uh, the woman who is being actively helped up just sort of collapses down back on the ground and sort of passes out. Uh, what do you guys do? Does Did they see it or just uh, just I see it because I'm in the back? Well, you didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Every, this um, is what everyone else in the, the group is everyone, hearing okay. and experiencing. Right. Verkin, are you close by? You're sort of in the middle of the group. Can you say? Could you can aid? Yeah, I'm in the middle. So after right. hearing the screams, I'm going to run over to where the woman is lying on the ground and ask her. Okay. So is she, she, is she unconscious? She is unconscious. She is. Okay. So I'm going to ask the people standing around her, what happened? Uh, they tell you that some strange man in a hooded cloak came up, knifed her, stole the bag of apples that uh, she was carrying and ran down, uh, like right past all the refugees. He looks like, and, you know, the people are like looking out in the back and you're, we have to think about stature here. You're a little bit shorter than they are. So you can't see through the group of people, but he's pointing right back. He's like, he passed right by that Kender right there. Uh, Anik's going to try to do uh, first aid on her or he does have, um, he does, he has nine points of uh, uh, mysticism or spirit points. Could he try um, yes, yeah, you can Birkin's try. Right, Birkin's right by him. Yeah, the... Virgin is right here. Byron. You're right there. Okay. So do you want to offer first aid or do you want to try to use magic? Uh, I think he wants to try to use magic. Okay, so uh, you're moving up at that point. Um, this is at the same moment that, uh, Virgin, you were told that the, uh, the criminal had just run by Anik 
and you have an unconscious woman right here. So what are you doing before Anik gets to you? Aren't you frozen? Oh, no. Not again. Yeah, like oh, turns, mate. Are we taking turns? <laughs> I did not authorize turns. <laughs> Ashley, come back. You know, okay, I'm having some internet issues here. Oh, okay. you're back. Sorry. It's okay. So what do you do? You hey, see this I woman... I got disconnected. And, um... <laughs> you're back. Yeah, you're back. so I'm going to attempt to heal this woman. Okay, do you want to use first aid or do you want to use magic? Hmm. I'm going to use magic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, invocation time, do you want to do this instantaneously? You want to take a minute? You want to take ten minutes? Oh, boy. Let me look at the steps again. <laughs> okay, let's see. I want to do this instantly. Five. And then uh, personal range is one. Two. That's six. Well, personal, yeah. Melee three, range, okay. right, because you're, you're right there. So uh, that's seven. And then uh, duration is instant as well, right? So that's eight. Yes. Uh, air of effect is an individual. That's nine. Individual. Yeah. So nine um, is the base spell points that you're going to expend. If you think you need to get a higher number than that to be successful, just let me know with the cards. And you have to play enough cards to equal nine or more. Okay. Um, and for me to use oops, my mysticism, which uh, card do I want to be using there? Spirit? Yeah, a heart. Correct. If you have one, that'll trump Ooh, it. I do have a heart. Okay, so my spirit is an eight. So I have this guy. Nice. So let's do that trump and card. Plus a seven. Nice. Okay. So you uh, reach. 17. In wow. That's great. That's a great number. Um, you reach into uh, your, the heart sure, of your everything. spirit, and you just feel this warm glow emanate out of you, and it travels down your arms, wrapping this young woman uh, in this sort of glow of uh, your own spirit. And you see the, the wound beneath the hole in her uh, sort of jerkin that she's wearing uh, close up, like completely seal up 100%. And uh, she just sort of slowly opens her eyes. And she looks up at you, and she just starts crying. Uh, could you tell us what happened? Are so this is better? when, Anik, you get here. So you arrive at this moment. Um, you see her sort of crying as uh, uh, um, Verkin is leaning over her. What do you do, Anik? Okay. So seeing that um, you know Verkin is healing her, I think he, he's going to try to run in the direction where the people were pointing that the, the person in the cloak came from. Okay. So he's just going to try to take off and try to see if he can catch up to him. Okay, I'm going to need a perception check. Okay. All right, let's go. So you, uh, Angor, you noticed that the the column has stopped moving full stop, and you heard screams and stuff. And you see, right. like, you know, these people, like, running back and forth, and, you know, you can see there's there's sort of a hectic situation happening. What do you and Torin do? Right. do? Uh, Torindel, are you on my side, sort of middle? Have you seen anything? Can you shout back? Because I'm at the front, so can you shout to me what's what's happened before I start? Um, I get the front of the column to halt. So if there's something going on, we need to stop. Yeah. But I can't see right down to the back, so I need uh, Torindel to... If we're in light of sight of each other. I, I, I don't know what exactly has happened. Um, something about a woman was injured or hurt or something is what's being rumored. Um, I can't see anything, um, unless, Adam, do I see anything? That, uh, yeah, at this just... point, people have been sort of moving, you know, sort of crowding around. And so you hear the discussions, and it's sort of the rumors like, oh my gosh, she healed her. Did you see that? Her wound closed up entirely as the rumors sort of echo out from the center of activity out to you. So you can actually see through bodies to see Verkin on the ground with this woman and you see Anik bolt out of the back side of this small group area. I got a seven, by the way, Adam, for the perception. Seven? 
Okay, yeah. yeah, you you do see people coming and going, but you don't see anyone that seems to be out of place, as it were, like, you know, charging down with a bag of apples or anything like that. It says six cards, but there's only five. You don't have to re-roll. There's a, I just, I didn't want to uh, mess okay. everyone else up. That's right. Yeah. Um, so um, just, I'm... Can I point at... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I apologize. No, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I was going to point to Angor. Um, Anik! And I point in the direction he's running. Sorry. Tell him to stop. <laughs> so, Anik, um, stop. <laughs> so you're shouting for Anik to stop. Um, Anik, do you have any? What is your? Uh, what is what is your code for perception? Uh, perception. It's A. It what, is A. What are you your be senses? <laughs> you have two acute senses with an A code. What are your two acute senses? Um. Let's see. It's your choice. Dealer's choice here. Oh, um, hearing. Uh, clearly not seeing. <laughs> um, he, what are the other options? All hearing of your and... senses. <laughs> <laughs> hearing and smelling. Okay. <laughs> you do hear Angor from the very top. You're screaming, Eric, stop! Uh, I, I think he wants to run a little further to try to see if he can find them before he stops. So maybe another round or, or however the time is measured. Okay. Give me a perception check. Okay. This one's a five, but uh, it's orb. So I think, is that Trump? Uh, perception, yes. Okay. So a five, a seven, and, and a two. Uh, so uh, 14. All right. So you don't actually see a person but you see a cloak discarded on the ground and you can see footprints going through a sort of a, a, a bit of a more marshy, mossy area that's going off trail into the wilderness. Okay, so he's going he's gonna to call out, guys, guys, he went this way, he went this way. And then okay, he's so going to take off following the footsteps. Oh, so you can do so. And, uh, uh, Angor, in the very far distance, you can see him stop, look down at the ground, sort of bend down, get back up, and go right into the, like, just through trees into just dense, mountainous terrain. Torndil, you see all of that, and you can, you know, sort of, like, look back and forth and hear the, the attempted interaction between the two. And you're starting to hear some of these plainsmen, um, these, you know, plainswomen and, and uh, children and stuff, uh, sort of murmuring amongst themselves, like, are they just going to let them knife one of our members? Do we not have any sense of importance to these people? We need, we need revenge. We need to at least get our property back. You know, Silence. it's starting to get a, a bit of a... Listen, I have told you once and again, these roads are dangerous. I told you to stay together and keep your eyes open. How is it our fault if someone comes up and knifes one of our members? Certainly you must do something about it. You were told this. to stay together. I keep You're your supposed to be open. protecting us. And what exactly can one person do at the front? I need your help. We're all in this together. Now you stop, gather together, and wait. So you see the start running with... off when Eversail is vulnerable for attack. Have you not encountered enough over the last two days? You do notice that people are, are starting to sort of help each other off the side of the road so they're not creating any sort of a bottleneck for people moving on the, the, the worn path. And you can tell that they're these are dispirited people, you know. He he's he's looking at you with frustration, not in you, but in the situation that they're in. And, you know, this is an older gentleman who he clearly can't go off chasing after this person himself. And so he's he's sort of at the end of his wits and exhausted and night has fallen and you know, people are, are moving around through torchlight at this point. Anik is disappeared they have one of them uh, that was just knifed so you can imagine that they would be very uh upset at this point right listen we're alive we're lucky every minute after this is a blessing please listen to me i'm trying to keep you alive so i can we really do so much we all need to work together let's get to the waypoint aim for the waypoint when we get there we stop we oh. then think. Are we going to leave the Connor, Kender? We'll look after the Kender. These are more important. If we all start running off now, we're all vulnerable and we're all in danger. 
Um, Torindel, can I get a perception check from you, please? Sure. Let's see. Let's do... Okay, so I played a six of crowns, which is not Trump. That gives me a total of 15. 15? You notice um, Henry and Kylie Kraysamar, those two children from the refugees, during this confrontation, they're sort of using it as a moment, as a distraction to sneak off after where Anik was going. So you see them start to go oh. in that direction. Okay, well... I basically look at over at uh, uh, Angor, and um, I say, "We like I'm motioning. We need to move." Um, and uh, I, I look over. I run down towards where uh, where Verkin is, and um, I just immediately say, "Verkin, some of the children are wandering off. We need to go get them. They're chasing after Anik and the burglar." Burglar. Right. It's oh, not the hamburglar. Oh, right. Who's the senior okay. villagers? I need three senior villagers to speak to. So you're talking to one of them. Another one was the a gentleman that um, uh, Verkin had given her water flask to earlier. So he comes up and you see a, a older but very distinguished looking woman um, walk up uh, as well with these two men. Like, uh, what can we do to help? Right. We're going to investigate this, but I need you to get to the first waypoint. I need you to get there. I need you to gather up and set camp. We right, have cousins up, up in the... No further. That will not Sorry. be a problem at all. We can do that. We right. have cousins... We'll investigate this. But stay together. Those that are able, keep your eyes open. These roads are dangerous. I'll not have to... I can't stress enough how traveling out in this area can be uh, at risk. I need you to stay together. Please get to the waypoint. So we know where to come to find you, and we're going to get into this. We understand. So they corral their people. Uh, a few of the uh, younger ladies pick up the woman that was um, hurt, recently healed, and they're sort of letting her lean on them as she's sort of you know recuperating and catching her breath and stuff. And the group starts to move toward the next waypoint, leaving the three of you sort of uh, standing here. So what are you guys going to do? Uh, right, guys, I want nothing more than to forget this candor, but he's taking trouble with him. <laughs> there it is. We're going to go. friend. <laughs> well, we have to make sure we watch out for uh, Harry uh, and Kylie. They, they chased after him. Uh, come on, they fought this way. And I start running in the direction that the candor uh, took. Okay. Right, start so, jogging after him. Um, Verkin, are you going with him? Yeah, I'm going to be attempting to find the wee kinder as well. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like catching bits here and there, you know, and the connection is being stupid. Are you able to restart it's your router while we're doing this? Outside, so. Uh, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> welcome to my world last week. <laughs> you don't have to if you yeah. don't want to, but it's, it's an option. No, I'm not going to until it gets like really, really bad. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you guys start moving into the brush. Again, this is nighttime. So those of you with elven backgrounds, um, you can see a little bit further. Uh, but again, it is getting really dark and you have trees that are obscuring your view into the distance of this mountainous terrain. I'm going to switch over to Anik here. Anik, you uh, seem to be tracking this uh, footprints and you actually start hearing, just with your acute senses, um, like uh, like little children, uh, almost ahead of you, uh, as you're moving forward, and you can uh, sort of hear muffled sounds of just a type of sound. All right, so I'm going to try to. Uh, I was running, but I'm going to slow down and try to approach stealthily, if I if I could. All right, let's check that with. Uh, I don't know what is that dexterity? No, that's agility. Agility? Yeah. Uh, okay. What's Trump on that? A shield. Shield? Oh, cool. Shield. Okay. So a six and... Uh, I'm sorry. Did you say agility or dexterity? I said agility. Agility. I'm sorry. So six and seven. So 13. Nice. You're oh, but shield, shield is Trump. So another eight. So 21. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. You are as <laughs> quiet as can be. Just sort of tiptoeing. Do, do, 
through coming up on him. As you um, break through this trees, you see a very small contained fire behind a rock, a sort of rock outcropping. And it looks like uh, this young single family. There's two children, there's a mother, and uh, this sort of uh, younger gentleman. All of them look pretty emaciated. Clothes are just hanging off of their bodies. And he is opening the sack of apples and giving it to the children. All right, so he's going to um, he's going to approach them now that uh, he sees that it's not anything more than this one family, okay. and he's going to say, um, "Behold!" And he takes out his sword. I am Anik, the nearsighted <laughs> Anik arrow catcher, straw slayer. I have a lot of names. Look, you just stabbed a woman and left her for dead. What? what? Do you, how do you, how do you explain? What, what do you have to say for yourselves? Who are you? What are you doing here? I didn't stab anyone, but if you don't leave right now, I will stab you. And he pulls out a bloodied knife. Well, what do you what do you call that? Look at the blood on the knife. I think that's blood. It, you're a little far away. He's like, keep your distance, Kendra. We want no trouble from you. We just, we're starving. We need to eat. The woman wouldn't give it to me, and I don't know what else to do. We have to eat. You, you, you could have asked. You'd stand the woman. If, if, if my friend wasn't really good at magic, she'd be dead. You see him stand up and just sort of like loom a little bit toward you as you hear two kids crash through the brush and they come and jump in front of you. You're not going to get him. Sort of holding their hands out. You recognize it as Slash and, uh, you know, Kylie, but, you know, Henry. Um, they're sort of standing in front of you with their arms stretched out as if they were some sort of a barrier between you and this this man. And they're like, don't hurt him! Don't hurt him! He's our friend! You can keep the apples! It's okay! So, alright, so now he's going to change tactics when he sees the, the kids there. So he's going to say, um, you know, on, on second thought, um, you know, we could all put our, our weapons down. Um, I'm not very good with mine anyway. And uh, we, could, we could talk about this. There's no reason to hurt any of the kids here. So he sheathes his, uh, his sword. And he's like, uh... You know, um, maybe maybe uh, we could all just have a, a, a calm discussion and uh, and and see uh, you know see where to go from here. You see, the woman uh, behind him had gathered her two children behind her, and she's as soon as those kids pop out and jump in front of you, uh, she's like, "Children, children, what are you doing? Come over here with me where it's safe. Don't get between them. It's dangerous. Come here." And the man's like, "Be quiet." Don't, we don't want to be involved with more children, more mouths to feed. We can't feed the ones we have. But they're just children. Certainly we can help them. Did you really stab that man? It wasn't a man and I had no choice. She wouldn't give it to us. You stabbed a woman? For, for apples? I have to feed you. I have to feed our children. What, what else can I possibly do? Um, can I get a perception check from Torindel? Sure. Let's see. We got a. Uh, let's see here. We got a perception total of eleven. You can hear, and you have acute senses. I have acute senses. I can. Um, my senses are smell and uh, touch. Okay, so that doesn't really help you in this particular instance, but you do overhear them. Uh, you hear talking in the distance in the brush, but you don't see any light. You know, you're, you're kind of far away from it, but you know a direction to go at least. Okay. And I'm leading the group that way. I keep, I'm trying to be as quiet as possible, but I'm waving them in the direction that the noise is coming from. Okay. Give me an agility check. Let's see. Agility check. And Verkin and um, uh, Angor, I'm going to need an uh, agility check from you as well. If you're trying to be quiet. Well, if not, then it doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to get in. Uh, my agility is going to be a four. Karaman. <laughs> what are you doing, Karaman? Really? Hey, he's my idol, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's clomping through the bush. All right. Um, yeah, you are not being successful at being quiet at all. <laughs> Uh, Is there Birkin, any point that's ruling? <laughs> it's up to you whether you want to or not. Uh, no, uh, he's ahead. If he's going to give us away, then we may as well just <laughs> yeah. wheel on in here. I right. got a seven. Oh, nice. So there's that. <laughs> I would have got a seven. But... Whatever. 
Yeah, um, a seven is not successful in this particular case, so you guys are still, all of you, you're trying, but you're also trying to be fast, and that is, of course, a deterrent to being sneaky. So you're going through the brush, making as much noise as you would normally make. Um, you know, again, it is dark. Do you guys have a torch? Are you relying on uh, the half-elf sight? Like, how are you? We're uh, relying on uh, Torndal. Uh, Torndal. Yeah, just, I don't just have a on it, Gran, we're bloody, uh, because the children went with him, or else we would have forgotten the camera completely. Um, <laughs> but because the kids went after him, <laughs> right. we're just going, oh, get, gotta get. Uh, in fact, if I had got the kids first, we're turning back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, ultimately, the, the man and wife are arguing, and the kids, as they're discussing in that brief moment, are looking up at you, Anik. Um, not far up because you're not that much taller than them. They're like, we need to get back to the group. It's just a bag of apples. They're just starving people. We can let them have the apples. Everything's okay. They healed the woman. I don't want you to get hurt, Anik. You, you kids shouldn't have followed me. You have to stay with the group. We're protecting you. I, I know, I know. And you will be my squire one day, Slash, but the time is not right. Um, let's, let's get you back to the group. These kind of decisions are way too big for me. I mean, literally, sure, but also, <laughs> I just, these are tough, these and are tough figuratively. calls. I was, yeah, I was talking to Torrendale about this. These are tough decisions. I'll let Angor and the rest of them make these decisions, but I got to get you guys back to safety. Here, come with me. I think I remember the way. Um, Slash, uh, maybe you remember the way? He's like, uh, uh, um... Uh, this tree looks familiar. And uh, it looks like he uh, he's confident that he knows where he's going for sure. All right. So he's going to start walking uh, with them back to the group. Okay. So you notice that once you like are having this conversation and moving away, this other family uh, is sort of like talking amongst each other. They look at you and he sort of scoops up the bag of apples grabs uh you know a kid and like sort of lifts it up on uh, on his hip and uh, the wife grabs the other child and they're just sort of like slowly backing away leaving that little fire burning uh this is the point where um you are moving south with the kids from okay. the west uh this other party uh, is coming in at you so um Torndale, you see uh the two children and Anik going further south and you notice a small little campfire a little contained fire and around this outcropping, a man, woman, and two children sort of backing away, heading north. Okay. Um, I, do I have a good sense of what's going on right here, or am I... Uh, you like, have no idea. What, you, you just stumble upon this, this scene. Okay. So I, I, I stumble upon the scene, and I just walk in, I go, Anik. Uh, it's Henry, right, is the child's name? Henry and Kylie? Slash. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you I say look, Henry, he's going to say slash. Okay. So I look over at Henry and Kylie and I say, uh, come on, get back, back away, back away. And I, I, I see the look at the other family and I hold my hand up and, and my and I hold my other hand with the uh, loot. And then I say, we're, we're all friends here. No one's here to hurt anyone. Like, we won't. Uh, good. Okay. Well, then go about your way. We were here first. This is our camp. And you can have your camp. We will leave. Uh. You do notice that he has a bag of apples, clearly the same one of the bags that was given to you from the shopkeep. I see that you uh, are a connoisseur of apples. I don't know what you're talking about. I suggest you leave. I'm not going to take the apples away from you. I just want some payment in the form of information, and then we'll have a fair trade for the apples. Just so you know, the woman will be all right. She was healed. We do have a mystic with us who has healing arts. And as Verkin cho cho uh, shows up, do you have any ills that need to be healed? Um, you see the, the woman sort of do this open sigh of relief when you say that uh, the woman is going to be fine. Um, and uh, she just sort of, with the child in her arms, sort of clutches closer to her husband. And she's like, w w what kind of information do we have to share? I, I truly don't know what we're going to do here. He's like, I'm doing my best. I don't know what else to do. We don't have information. We're just trying to survive. All we want to know is where you're from 
and why you've had to be, why you're out here. Is there is there trouble? Because we we have a large group of people. We don't want to 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 stumble upon any trouble if we can help it. But if you can tell us a little bit about your story and why you are out here and why you're starving, I will let you have the apples and we will part as friends. I just want to make sure that you're safe and our people are safe. And if there's anything you can tell us that will help us make sure everyone stays safe, I think the apples are well yours. She uh, she leans into him. She's like, tell him. Tell him what happened. He's like, it's not a stranger's concern about our life. Why should we trust in him? How do we know they're Am not going to... Yeah. What's that? Am I there yet? Yeah. yeah, you all I'm are there. there. You are all there. Right. Um, yeah, that that blasted I mean... tender! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I am standing in front... I'm standing in front of a man that's used a weapon on unarmed civilians. Well, yes, but you don't know that's who he is. At right. this point, he's never outed that he's killed anyone or anything, especially since you've been here. Okay, um, let this play out for a minute. Uh, it's going to get interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. So they're talking amongst each other, and uh, he looks over, he's like, we're originally from Haven. As soon as Barrow, the green monstrosity, took Quilinesty. We were forced to leave. The Dark Knights ran us out of town. We had no time to collect our possessions, and we've been living in these cursed mountains ever since. Sometimes we can do odd jobs for people that are moving up and down, fixing broken wagon wheels or something, but it's been days since anyone's needed any of our aid, and as the days get worse and our state gets worse, no one really wants anything to do with us. We, we don't know where to go. We heard that Solace is filled and going down south is going back towards the Dark Knights. I don't, I don't know what to do. The world is in upheaval. Everyone's trying to survive on their wits. And that's what we're doing. I'm providing for my family. And it's none of your concern. Well, my only concern is that everyone remains safe. And if we can help someone, I'm more than willing to help. I'm more than willing to assist in any way. And if you could tell me your names, my name is Torindel, the fabulous. And I just strum my, my, uh, my lute. <laughs> and I say, but I just want to make sure that you know that we have no ill intent. We're traveling north to Solace to try to find the knights. Uh, we ourselves have been running into some problems. And so we are, uh, we're going to see if they have, if they can help us. But if you wish, Maybe if you wish to stay a little further back from our group, and if you ever wish to communicate if you need help, just stay further back and come and make sure you hold up a white flag, and I will come and we can talk. But no more are we going to have any situations where the conversations start with pointy ends. And I look over at uh, Angor and I go, please. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um I need to, right, so my character uh, obviously is all about soldiers and honourable combat. So if you put a weapon on unarmed civilians, you have to die. So wow. that is my instinct. Okay. Do I have to roll against it because I'm going to run this guy through? Wow. <laughs> That's a very uh, evil act. Hence, hence the Hobgoblin incident last week. Because they were attacking an unarmed village. Oh my gosh! Well, give me a reason check to see if you're putting together what um, Torindo was saying, sort of coded to uh, Anik. You um, clearly are going to be able to see the apples here shortly, anyway. But yeah, just, let me see. Two. two. Okay, you're not picking that up, but you do notice the apples uh the mother is holding the apples in one hand and a child in the other so the man is holding a child on his hip as well you see um the other children are starting to move away from anakin towards uh as if they you know sort of are approaching behind coming up from uh behind torindil as if they're gonna you know sort of engage with the people in some way or something and this is you what do you want to do all right swipe on the bridge um is this him to who uh, I'll, I'll come into the clearing. Uh, right. I say to the candor, is this, is this him? To Anik? Well, you know, all I know is... Is I, this him? Uh, no, is this I, I don't think... 
I don't think so. We haven't. Um, I don't think we found them. We just found the apples, and this family, I think, just found the apples laying on the ground. So yeah, no, I, I don't think so. And honestly, it's getting dark. I don't think we're gonna find them. I think we I should just head back to camp. Um, as so the woman screams as, ah and like starts backing as, up. Yeah. Can you say that again, Angor? I said, I, I draw my sword. I say more clearly and more menacingly. Is this him? Do you draw your sword on Anik? Um, no, on the. Oh, facing the guy, the asking Anik. Okay. That's it. And I ask Anik. Question. He does pull his dagger out. He's like, "What?" And he pulls it out. He's like, "What are you doing?" And he drops the the kid, and he like ushers the kid away to the mother, and the mother backs up, screaming, just making a, a ton of noise. Uh, Slash and Kylie, let's, uh, why don't, why don't we make it a race? Let's race back to the group. Here. No, wait, stop, 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 stay here. Everyone stop. And I'm going to get a question uh, to the, the Dungeon Master storyteller person, Adam. Uh, <laughs> can I use sensitivity to not just monitor people's emotions, but modify them? Uh, unfortunately not. It's just a reading and aura type power. Okay. Just want to make power. sure. Can I use channeling to reduce uh, to to reduce uh, Angor's um, ability to do something? Like if I drop something to zero or whatever, can I make him fall asleep? You with can it? try. Well, you can try to reduce his stats, um, um, but it is going to be contested. Uh, I understand. I understand. I just want. I want to make sure he doesn't kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want him to kill somebody. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, so I do want to put uh, you know some things into perspective. Um, this is uh, a sort of a, a wild area, right? So there's no law out here. Once you get into a town proper, if people hear about illegal activity, you may be liable for that and be brought up on trial for that illegal activity, including this guy who just stole uh, apples and stabbed someone. Um, that being said, it is up to you on how you react with your characters, but it is murder to go around murdering people. <laughs> Meaning, okay, I'm gonna. Can, can, can I? Then I will. Then before he attacks anyone, can I just? I'm gonna use my ability to persuade him. I'm saying, Angor, please. We don't need any more killing. There's enough suffering here. Barrel and uh, Sable and all those other high dragon lords. They, they cause more suffering than anything. We don't need to cause any more. These people will not bother us ever again. And I look over at him, right? Do I need to play a card to show how much I'm trying You're to persuade him? You're going to have to, because I'm, am I noticing the blood on the blade? I've noticed, he's pulled of his course, blade, you, right? you saw the I apples, right you see the blood on the blade. Yeah, yeah, you can put right. two and two so. together at this point. Um, he's, he's looking uh, over at, between Torindil and Angor, he's like, Right. R right. He's clearly afraid. Right. I mean, he, he, this is not a warrior. He, he's emaciated. His clothing is hanging off of his body. Um, is, you know, he's, he's fighting for survival, and that's why he did I'm already angry because I had to chase after the Kender, mm -hmm. and I've left the group in peril. So I am... Uh, so he's... You know what I mean? That's, that's just that, and that's my honor system. Your character. Oh, okay. the blade, weapon to weapon, soldier to soldier is fine. The minute you pull a weapon on someone that's not able, can I? That's I'm I'm out to kill this guy. Okay, well let's. So can I? Am I? Is there so, any chance for me to persuade him not to with my cards? Um, when it's character to character, I'd prefer to do it through role playing rather than card play because I don't want people to feel, you know, right. like you're taking over autonomy or anything like that. <laughs> Um, in this particular case, uh, we're going to go on initiative, initiative being just right on the, the, the side of the screen here in order. So, Anik, we are in an initiative situation. What do you want to do in this moment? So he tells the kids, uh, guys, we're going to make it a race. We're going to race back to the rest of the, the, the refugees. All right, ready? And who, the winner who gets is the one who gets there first. Ready? Go. Because he, he just doesn't want the kids to see any more bloodshed right. after the uh what they just went through in the town right so he's gonna race with the kids back to the refugees they go with you they're, they 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 can tell that this is too adult for them and they're not ready for it so they just sort of 
chase after you trying to grab a piece of you know a fabric of a cloak or something off of you to stay with you because it is dark and they can't see so yeah gotcha. um Race is hey, with Gorf, you kill this man ahead. verkin speaking okay, does not so take I'm a turn go, i'm gonna go to the lady and try to persuade her you need to come with me with the children back to our refugee group refugee group i can't abandon my husband how, how could I possibly? You're not gonna let him murder him, are you? He only stole the, the the apples for us. Take them back! And she just throws them on the ground. They sort of roll out of the sack. It's not worth our lives. She looks over at him. Tenon, please go. Please just let's leave. Let's just let them have the apples. Let's just fucking leave. She doesn't say the word. <laughs> He's like, I don't. I don't think I have a choice. Just go with her. Go with her. Angor, if you kill this man, you're killing that family. You need oh. to come with me. I'm speaking to the lady. Did that lady have a choice? She had well, a family to look after. I her. asked her. Yes, she refused. Robber, but... so what? She asked and I, she refused. I have starving children. What am so I supposed to do? Blade? You're good with that blade? I'm coming against somebody who can also use a blade. He's not going to attack you if that's what you're expecting. <laughs> There's no way he's going to attack what, you. I'll make it easier. I'll sheath my sword and draw my short dagger. Is this more to your liking? Huh? Is this going to make it wor worthwhile? Do you want to be brave now? You were brave against a defenseless civilian? Come on. Come on, brave warrior. Why ah, lunges. All right, so I'm going to need a defense if you're letting him go first or an attack if you're not going to let him go first. I'm going to let him go first, because uh, we'll see what how this plays out. Remember, I'm trying to fight it's just the way this goes is the same, so it's just you do a defense and then a, an attack. It's up to you. Um, right. So defense against personal melee is an uh, uh, endurance check. I did not see this game That's going 15. this direction, just so you guys know. <laughs> 15. 15, you said? <laughs> okay yeah you, you this guy doesn't know what he's doing he's just a he's a regular dude you know he's and he's emaciated at that practically starving so he lunges at you you easily batter it out of the way it's your move what do you want to do if you're attacking it's going to be a strength check okay warrior you want to play this game huh i'm <laughs> gonna slice him on the cheek i'm gonna play them because i'm i'm in I'm trying to fight against myself, but at the same time, this can't be allowed to go. Right. So are you are you holding back intentionally? I'm holding back, um, but at the same time, I'm not gonna. You know, what I mean, I'm gonna fight him, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna deck him on the cheek first. Okay. So just a strength check. Just a strength. Um, seven. Uh, fourteen. Oh, yeah, you, you definitely hit him. So if you're holding back, I'm going to let you decide how much damage you're doing here. I just want to uh, want to slice him on the cheek, leave a nice gash on his face. You definitely do. So you you uh, push away his dagger and you just reach out and just sort of, you know, you've, been, you've, you've fought so much. Your whole life is nothing but military combat. You understand how to, to press and, and give uh, when you need to. So you just easily just do a light little swipe. A light swipe, but it still slices open his cheek. And you see blood immediately start flowing down his cheek. And he just, you know, screams out. You can see terror in his eyes. He's sort of staggering a little bit, trying to hold his sword up as he's, like, Come wiping on, his face. You've got a war wound now. Come on, you've got battles to boast about. Come on, as you attack innocent villagers. Let's see what you've got. Torindal, you're up. Um... I don't have, I'm holding, because I don't, I, I see that he's not killing him. I see that he's playing with him right now. I'm hoping hoping that his better, the better version of himself will realize that after he teaches him a lesson, he doesn't kill him. And I'm just going to wait and see what he does. Because this, this can make a big difference on a lot of things in the future. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you holding for an action or are you just going to give up your turn? I'm giving up my turn to okay. watch. I'm just going to watch it first to see. 
So, Anik, can I get a uh, perception check from you to see if you go in the right direction? Oh, <laughs> oh okay. no. <laughs> it's nighttime, you know? I mean, he's not well, the best. Yeah. <laughs> a four. Total. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Verkin. They're going to claw in a state. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up in Zach Staroth. Wait a second. How did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Birkin, what you, um, it's your turn. So I, like, the woman has gone to you, and she's like shouting, "Don't hurt him! That's enough! Stop, please!" You know, sort of shouting, but she's staying away, staying with you. And the kid children are crying. I mean, this is a, a scene. Hmm. Okay. Am I able to use like mysticism to calm the children and the lady so that they can leave um, with me? They're going with you. Um, on their own free okay, will. scrap that. I'm gonna be ushering them down the trail. Um, my perception is quite better than Anik, so I believe. <laughs> hopefully, uh, we're going the right way. Uh, okay, so just give me a quick perception check. Right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Tell me you got a good card. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for the moon. Oh yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, so my uh, perception is a seven plus a one, but hopefully we got a good trump here. Eleven. Eleven? Okay, that's good enough. Um, yeah, you you start taking her back. You're you're able to discern the tracks that you came in on, and you're just heading straight back to the road. Uh, you do okay. notice that you don't see Anik or the two children. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Andor? so as you're moving, it is now Angor's turn. Uh -oh. um, what's our uh, friend doing? Um, I, I, I need to roll against myself to see how this plays out. That's just my character's nature. Uh, I mean, I can I can pull a, a random card to help guide you. Is he uh, right? Is he coming for me again? I've cut him. No, he's um, not. He didn't want to do it in the first place. But you're goading. He's still holding the dagger. Yeah. Come on, warrior. You've still got your weapon ready to fight. I don't want to fight you. I've never wanted to fight you. I don't know why you're cutting my face. Oh, We're trying to survive here. Culture. We're just... You'll attack refugees. I oh, did what man. I had to do in the Sorry. moment. I wasn't thinking right. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about any of this. You think I'm proud about what I've become? What, what I have to do to survive here? Still I'm not proud happen. about any of this. Come on, prove yourself, warrior. You why are you picking on poor innocent people? Why are you going around... You're no better than a dark knight. You're worse because you know our situation. You you I don't even care. Worse than you'll ever imagine. He's still holding his weapon. So yes. Okay, then we're going for it. Okay, so he's not going to attack back, but he's going to try to defend from you. So uh, just give me an attack. I'll go for his. Uh, I'll go for his hand with a weapon. Are you uh, trying to disarm him? Slash. The, so I'm going to go for oh, his okay. uh, weapon arm. Okay, um, that is going to be a strength. It's a little bit more challenging because you're doing like a called shot, ostensibly, but. Right. Uh, what about this misery, man? <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> you guys are mean. We're murder My hobos. Gosh, this is not heroic behavior. Oh, God. Uh, 13. Uh, 13 isn't enough to slash him in his arm uh, specifically, but you do hit him. Um, how, are you trying to withhold or are you like straight up attacking or what? As long as he's got a weapon in his hand. I'm not straight out run them through, but I'm uh, going for his weapon arm to see what he uh, does next. If he's, as long as he's holding that dagger, I'm going for it. And the next move, I'm probably going to kill him if he's still holding that. Okay. So uh, you, you slash him again, and you just see this sort of blind rage turn on in, in his eyes, and he just lunges at you. Um, give me a defense. That's endurance. Okay, so that's uh, six. fourteen. So you easily bat know. away his attack. Let's uh, go. These cards. Torndil. Uh, sorry. It's okay. I'll just delete so... this card. I'm, uh, Angor. You make your point. 
Warrior just, still holds his weapon. He wants to fight. He wants to show how brave he is. He's brave at attacking defenseless refugees. So let's see how he does Warrior to Warrior. He's like, you dare call me a warrior when you are clearly a trained soldier. He throws the dagger down. You're the coward here. You're the one attacking defenseless people just because I hold a, a knife that I need to cut apples with. That makes me a warrior? What kind of a man are you? You are weak. You are nothing. You are evil. Oh, I take him a slam against the rock. Okay, hold on. On your turn. So, Anik, right. <laughs> perception check. Oh, boy. Five. That's <laughs> slightly <laughs> thinner. Kids, I think we're getting closer. Goodness. What's this swamp? Well, uh... <laughs> I don't remember a swamp. They're like, are you sure you know where you're going, Anik? <laughs> this doesn't seem to be the right direction. We should have been by the road by now. The important thing is, guys, to stay calm, and we're making great time. <laughs> great time to where? We're not going in the right direction. I'm sure of it. As Henrietta's like, Slash, you don't have a clue where you are. Look at the moon. Just follow the moon. It's like, we can't follow the moon. We can't fly. We can't go straight up in the air. What kind of a stupid suggestion is that? Don't call me stupid. And she pushes him. And he turns around. He's like, don't you push me again. Uh, maybe I'll knife you next. So he said, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slash, slash, slash. We got a lot to talk about when you're, if you're going to be my squire. We don't hurt women and we don't hurt innocent people. He sort of we have a lot to talk about. There's a really big book you have to read, and then you can explain it to me because it was really big. It was the. Uh, I'm not going to hurt her. I just, I miss my mom. I'm a little bit scared. It's dark. I can't see anything. I think your friend is killing that man back there. For apple. Um, no, I, I think they just wanted to have a talk about grown-up stuff. Usually, uh, it goes over my head. What if we made a fire? What if we made a fire? That that would help. Are you admitting you know? that we're lost? No, no, no. It's just that it's almost winter or we're getting cold. We could just make a nice fire and just hang out for a little bit until the rest of the group catches up. We just ran too fast. That's okay. all. Okay. Okay. So you sit down and, and make a fire with them? Yeah. <laughs> Virgin. You can hear shouting from behind you but you're not really discerning any words at this point as as the woman the children are actively crying the woman is breathing you know just tr trying to keep up with you in the dark just feeling her way trying to you know every once in a while she reaches out to tap you to make sure she's in the right direction and you know it's straight up nighttime oh no you're frozen again i'm back no, okay she's back she's back <laughs> so what do you do Sorry, okay, so are we still on the path back to the group, or do we return to the group? Uh, you're on the pathway, the correct pathway back to the group. Uh, I'm just wondering, are you headed doing that at the same time? Are you still continuing that way? Well, since I have them in my company, yes, I'm going to keep okay. leading them back to the group. I want to make sure that they are calm and taken care of. Okay. Uh, you continue, you're going the right way, so you, you actually, in the distance, you can see uh, some sort of, like, uh, lanterns hanging from posts on this main road. Um, they're, you know, like 300 yards apart, but you can see the light coming from them uh, as you approach the road and, you know, relative safety of the, the, the main travel fare. Angor. Right, so this guy just called me a coward. Oh yeah. After attacking, oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I just grabbed him by the throat and I'm slamming him against the, the rocky outcrop that was that we were standing by. Okay, so this is going to be a um, strength check? I mean, as hard as possible. Okay. Just, you know, hand to the throat, straight into this. Okay. I don't know how much damage I'm going to take, but... Well, it's going to be um, your strength oh, bonus. Yeah, um... Strength, sorry. Uh, that's 11. You grab him. How much damage? What's your strength? Uh, your, like your flat strength, what is that? Sorry, flat strength is uh, 7. Okay, you bash his head against the rock, and his eyes just go slack. And he sort of goes limp in your arms. He Torn calls up. me coward. I try to protect people against filth like him, and he calls me coward. Torndo. 
I just look at Angor. We're no longer I'm, in initiative, I drop, by the way. I just look at him and I drop my head down and I'm like, "Is your knight? Is your warrior code tell you to beat up on people weaker than yourself? I understand where your point is. You made your point, but the fact is, this man still is a father and still has a family to feed. Hey. I understand why his motivations are what he did, but you don't need to kill him. I think he will learn his lesson." And maybe you could even turn him into the authorities when we get to Solace. Maybe the knights will deal with him. I give up Candor Orange to stop. We have not left the group defenseless. And this both calls me coward? I'm now well, starting to focus on... Uh, I'm sorry. This is going to go well. Uh, what are you doing? I'm starting to focus on Torrendo. Really? You're, you're that me. out of control? Yeah, when it's... Things that got, like, that's why I ran the go. I know it's coming out now, but that's why I ran the hub going through last week. If you attack non combatants, that's what sets me off because it's basically after the destruction of my company against what a, you know, seeing good men torn down and everything built up just shredded the pieces. This is part of the after effects. Okay. Question in the honor, but I've, I've watched good madness. men decimated You're... and destroyed. Oh. Okay, you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to stop you. But I'm right not, now, I'm you're a murderer. Just... You are going to be brought up on charges if anyone ever finds out. And you will probably be hanged. If you turn on more people, it's going to be worse. You were in a mercenary group when you killed people before. You were defending a village when you were doing it before. This is not that. And you as a soldier should know the difference between war and petty theft. Like, yeah, you're, you're not, like, said, blind but, rage. Yeah, you're not a barbarian. Off. I didn't know how much damage I was doing. That's why I didn't do the weapon. But the challenge and tone in uh, Thorndale's voice saying that is not helping. So All right. To, Are we in initiative sorry, or not? Not not in combat, but turning towards him saying, you call me unreasonable? You know, a felt like us? It makes me question your uh, decision making when you are willing to kill someone over apples when the person that he attacked is fine. I understand you have a code of honor and you're going to defend it and words mean something to you, but life means something to me. I have lost more people in my life during the War of Chaos. I've lost my faith. I've lost everything that I ever held dear. But yet, I don't go around just murdering people because my feelings are hurt or someone says some words. You're a great warrior. I've seen you fight. But I think you need to think before you use your sword, why are you using your sword? The children in the kinder ran off. Verkin ran off. I think that's more important than killing someone because of apples. So, can you help me? Find the children, find Anik, and find Verkin, and make sure that we can get back so everyone can be safe. And I look down at the guy on the ground. Um, is he still breathing? No, no. I look at uh, Angor right in the eyes and I say, you are no better than the dragon lords. Right. I slump my shoulders and I walk away. Okay, how do I play this one? It's... So nobody saying, I was fighting against myself not to do it. You have, as as you as a player have control over what you do. He's turned around. Um, I hear his words and I just sigh with anger at myself. But I need to deal with his body now. So. I don't know. What are you guys going to do with the body? Go. Just not go. It's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you leave the body? 
country uh, not bringing them with me. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be a good thing. Okay, so you leave the body. Um... Please grab the apples. <laughs> <laughs> Do you pick up the apples and take those? Yeah, I'll pick up the apples. Then I'll... <laughs> Look what I found, guys. <laughs> Bloody apples. Okay, so um, Good apples, can I get a perception check from Torindil to see if you can make it back to the road? Um, yeah, um, mainly looking for the tracks, the children. Um, let's see, perception is nine. So I'm gonna do a. Uh, I got a fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, so you notice there's two distinctly different tracks. There's two adult-sized tracks and a child-sized tracks going right back to the road. And you see two child-sized tracks and one almost adult-sized tracks going off to the south. I'm going to follow the child-sized tracks because they're the ones I think that are in most danger. Okay. So you eventually... Uh, are you going with the Mangor? Yeah. Okay. Just walk so, back with... Yeah. Uh, just as a sort of out of character's note, I like the I like the the role playing that you guys did to deal with that horrendous situation, and how you resolved it. I think is probably the best possible way to resolve that. So I, I really do appreciate how you guys did that. Um, so you guys eventually get up to a sort of small campfire with the two children and Anik. As soon as they see you guys come stumbling through. Um, the children scream initially, and then they recognize who you are. And uh, the kids come running up. Uh, Henry comes running up slash uh, to Torindale. He's like, can we get back to the road? I think Anna got us lost. Oh, he didn't get you lost. He just took you on the scenic route. Anik is a great tracker as well as a knight. So um, come on, kids. Let's go. And good job, Anik, making sure that they stay safe. Definitely. I'll show you the rest of the tour tomorrow. You're we'll get crazy. back to the refugee camp now. <laughs> okay, so you eventually get back. You guys have lost about an hour and a half, two hours throughout this entire little, uh, you know, tracking exchange and stuff. Uh, you get back to the main group and uh, Verkin is already there with the wife and two children. They don't even look in Angor's direction at all. Um, they're just quietly off by themselves. Uh, the, the plainsmen have sort of, uh, you know, welcomed them in, given them water. They clearly are dehydrated and just um, now that you guys can sort of see them in the light, they've been living off the land for a very long time and they look worse for the wear. I mean, they, they're, they're really in bad shape. And so uh, they're taking a whole lot of water and a whole lot of food that the plainsmen are offering and, and any sort of um, uh, care, health care that you could give Verkin is, is welcomed. Yes. Okay. All right. So are you guys going to camp here for the night? We're at that first waypoint, or are you going to go through the night? Uh, no, got, a, got a camp. It's not safe for the, you know, look at the way they're going. The villagers, okay. they're, they're struggling. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Wait. Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Did you want to uh, help with uh, health care with this uh, woman and two children? Yes. Sorry about that, guy. It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, we'll yeah, here. I'm going to be <laughs> using magic to uh, cure any wounds that they have. and just Okay. You don't have to, we don't have to roll on no. it. You, just, you have all night to tend to their, their care and stuff. And, and everyone's going to recover oh, okay. um, like eight spell points or nine spell points from this point um, that you've spent in the previous day, if you're missing them. Uh Everyone, if you're missing any cards in your hand, I don't think anyone is. Um, so, morning comes early. I'll just, yeah. What's up? I was just gonna say yes. Yeah, so I stay with them. Okay. Um, all right. So, if everyone is good with uh, the evening, then we can move out in the morning. Right. We need to make a decision. Is it safe and sensible to keep this convoy moving, seeing what we've seen? I mean, that was... The more, uh, the more we travel with the group, the more in harm's way and the less resources there are. Right. 
we'll have to think about um, whether it's worth leaving the group. The villagers here. No, that would be infinitely more dangerous than taking them to Solace. Uh, like this is a well-traveled road. That was yeah. a random occurrence that no, but it's what not I mean, a is, common sorry, thing. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying that that was a random occurrence that happened yesterday, and it's not something that is common on this stretch of road. I mean, this is a no. well-traveled, safe. Adam, can I just ask, what is the weather like? It's late autumn, early winter. Is, yeah, is it's it's factor? overcast. Um, it's cold and windy. You guys are much higher elevation at this point, and um, it's it's miserable. You know, it's not raining, but it's damp from early morning. You know, you just have that dew that sort of settles on everything, including your guys' bodies and you know your gear. So that chill runs deep into your bones. Um, and, you know, you're getting these calls of birds, you know, the carrion birds that are flying through the area and feasting on <laughs> that guy at this point. Uh, and, you know, just it's, uh, you know, people are going by in wagons already. Like life has already sprung up as soon as the sun rose. So it's cold. It's overcast. It's windy. Right. So call the group and the senior villagers together. Mm hmm. And I relay what was told to me by the, the other group we encountered about more refugees arriving in uh, Salmania uh, and the fact that there's less resources. And right. um, it's going to be hard scrubbing. And I want to put it to the villagers, is it worth the refugee group continuing on? Uh, and to make them aware that it's going to get harder there's going to be less food and water available. Right. Are they up to it before we make any moves forward? Because that decision kind of needs to be made. Yeah. Are we going to travel as a group before the approach to nights with maybe one or two representatives? Or does this caravan continue? So they all, they want to get the women, children, and elderly off this road and into Solace. If they have to sleep outside of town, well, that's safer than in the middle of the mountains. So they would infinitely prefer to get into town. Right, and uh, need to deal with Anik running off because that puts the group in danger. And I mean, he's a kender. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. I know what they, that's the, right. that's the cut of their jib. <laughs> Move him to the middle of the group rather than the back. Okay. Who wants a volunteer to go at the back? My favorite words that a kender says is, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so right, um, who wants to volunteer to uh, go at the back of the group? Because I'll take up the rear. Oh, you will? Okay. okay. I'll let you. <laughs> yeah. Verkin takes right. up the back. Um, Anik, do you move back to the center area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So I keep Anik near order. me, but at arm's okay. length. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wise. All right, then. I guess we're we're moving on. Okay. That was a random encounter, by the way. <laughs> Took an hour and a half. I appreciate that, but like I said, I have to... <laughs> it's a good you scene, people. man. That was a great scene. I, I love agree. it. I, I love agree. it. I have to, you know, there's certain things, um, yeah. and there's other things in future that might come into play. Yeah. <laughs> and I just have to go with it. Not okay. all. Sensible. I mean, yeah, it's your character, it's your choice. <laughs> Yep. So um, the road to Solace from Newports is chill. As the days continue into the new year, there is a fair amount of traffic due to the seemingly endless flow of refugees from the Overlord's realms. Making this journey with the families of the Duntal residents is made easier due to the chaos unfolding nearly everywhere. Knowing that you have limited time to find lodging and aid from the Knights of Salamnia, time truly is of the essence at this point. Um, you enter into Solace. Uh, you can actually, let me just show you a quick little map image here sort of what you guys are looking at as you're entering this is just a sort of uh, essence of what you see solace is a tree-based city um a lot of the city is built up in these massively tall valenwood trees uh, kind of like the ewok village in star wars to be quite honest they have passageways amongst trees they also have trails on the ground and, and villages and buildings on the ground as well because this quite frankly has been burned down more than once in the last 50 years 
So, you know, this is all new construction that you're seeing up in the trees now. You can see the Valenwoods have burned scor scorch marks. You can see, you know, some massive stumps of, of destroyed trees and stuff from, from uh, conflicts in the past, recent past. And this is kind of the vibe you're getting as you're uh, walking into town. Uh, I mean, the first thing I would suggest, well, I'm not going to suggest anything. What do you guys want to do? You enter town. Guys, I've always wanted to see the tomb, the tomb of heroes. I've heard. There you are. <laughs> get the villagers. Let's get these people sorted out first. Go on, just come in. Zip it. <laughs> Zip it. <down. laughs> Zip. So this is not an updated current map. This is a map that's going to be in like 30 years. So just understand that this isn't quite 100%, but this is a general idea of the map of Solace. We don't need to know exact pinpoints of places, but just for the sake of um, Anik, this is the Tomb of the Last Heroes. This is where you guys are. This is the jail. And... <laughs> Uh, this is the end of wait. This is the end of the last home. Excuse me. Right there. So, you guys enter Solace. What do you do? Are there city guard? No, this is a very uh, welcoming town, and, and this it's very well traveled. You got people that come here at random times throughout the year for random reasons. Uh, right now, there's a lot of people here just because it is welcoming all refugees, and you can imagine that any city guard presence is going to be sort of up to their eyeballs in dealing with stuff. They don't have the the men to spare to like stand at roads or anything like that. Right. Um, we need to find someone to. We can't just dump an entire caravan in the middle is we need to find somewhere if they're being uh corralled or moved at a certain area set up so um, we need one person to go forward to find that out you guys want me to so, scout ahead no no Alec, you you keep an eye on the middle of the group okay <laughs> is there a uh, body Turn of water out. or Could something help so we can out? get fresh water yeah is there, the, yeah i was is there a place that's near water that we can make sure that we could camp at? That way the people at least have access to that resource. Yeah, absolutely. The you lake. can find somewhere in town. I mean, again, this is an operating town. And so, you know, there's wells that you could, you know, go and get water from. If you really want to go to like horse troughs, there's horse trough water there. Um, but like setting up camps in the middle of town, you will be approached no, I'm, by. No, no, no. The, the, the way I'm, I'm trying to say out of character, I'm saying, um, I'm trying to lead someone to saying, is there a body of water nearby? Because I wasn't part of the conversation to hear about Crystal Mar Lake. So I'm okay. asking about... I'm oh, so you're thinking saying, like a, a lake or a pond-sized body of water. Yes, yeah, somewhere, okay. somewhere where the people can have food resources as well as water, and that's not directly in town. Right. You're a half-elf, right? Yep. What's, the other, what's your elf half? My elf where, half? Yeah, where are you from? Quality, Savannah, Steve, Kagan, Steve? Um... Quillanesty, but uh, my mother was uh, uh, raised in Salomnia, so I grew up in okay. Salomnia. Okay, so you wouldn't be familiar very well. Um, Verkin, you grew up uh, in you know hill home area, so you you're familiar with Solace. You know that there's Crystal Meyer Lake to the west um, of the town. So if he's asking if there's a body of water, you could let him know. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna suggest that we shuffle our whole crew of refugees to the lake to set up camp there. Okay. It's a capital idea. Sounds good. So, uh... This picture's all pitching up in the square, putting up tents and everyone up that. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, this isn't California. You can't hey. do that here. <laughs> um, so, as... There, you know, you can direct the people to go to, uh, or you can guide them there. What is your guys' plan? Are you going to split up? Are you going to all go to Crystal Meyer? Like, what? How are you going to work this out? Get them there first and set up. Okay. Get, yeah, uh, I suppose. Uh, come as far. Right. Just to lead them towards the lake. That's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> okay. So as you're moving toward the lake, Anik, you're seeing tons of really interesting things going on from blacksmiths to children playing you see people in robes walking and talking studying over books 
Um, it's just, this is a vibrant hive of activity. People from all over, from Salamnia to Nordmar to Kolonisti and, and uh, the Plains of Dust and the uh, Kweishu uh, Plainsman Nation uh, have, have come in. I mean, you're just seeing this plethora of people and activity. You've already uh, discovered that you have a very nice ornate comb in your hand. And uh, for some reason, you were reaching over uh, towards someone's shoulder who had this very nice necklace. So he's going to... Do I um... see this happen? <laughs> Give me a he's perception. You're keeping an eye on him. <laughs> he's going to try to um, slowly drift towards uh, the Tomb of Heroes, which he grew up reading about. That's and literally where everyone's going see. right now, so that's that'll be great. So you guys are all headed... You have to pass the Tomb of Heroes right here. The in, oh, okay. Um, in order to get to Crystal Meyer Lake, which, again, is outside of town a ways. Uh, as you're moving, there's, you know, you've got like 57 people with you sort of going along. Uh, you just see someone, uh, you know, from a business stall come out, uh, out of their business like, uh, are you guiding more refugees? Literally just calling out to the group. They don't know if anyone's in charge or not. Okay, I'll walk yes. over and approach him. <laughs> We have buildings for people. Uh, we, we have uh, common rooms. Uh, we, we have uh, shanty towns. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, have everyone travel in a big, strange gaggle. That would be most welcome. We obviously don't want to be a burden. Uh, these what? people obviously have suffered. Uh, I've traveled here from Dunthill and I've been through quite a lot. Uh, any assistance would be greatly appreciated. I would recommend you ask Lady Renee Uth Valinar. She's a former Salamnic, and she operates uh, one of the common inns up uh, to the north here. If you just follow this road, take a right, you'll run right into it. That sounds like a plan. Thank you kindly, good sir. Have a wonderful day. You too. So what do you guys do? Cool. Um... We're, gonna, we're gonna take a suggestion then. Um, Okay. Because that's, so, that's obviously a lot easier if there's less than said, if there's things set up. Yeah. Make use of them. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. So you, you uh, take the right and you're headed straight north and uh, you come up to, it looks like uh, a makeshift shantytown, essentially. I mean, it's just, there's tents overflowing from the common building. Um, you see a bunch of people just in common clothes bringing out food and soup and and uh, water to uh, various different tent groups. And it's like a whole thing. Um, as you guys are approaching this sort of uh, rather large group, you see a, a woman sort of wiping her brow, look up, uh, sigh a little bit, <laughs> whether you notice it or not. And she uh, approaches, do you have more refugees? Uh, talking to you, Virkin. Yes, we do. Um, quite a large group. Uh, do you have an exact number by chance? Hmm. 57? Was that Oh my goodness. last count? I have room here for 20. There's another uh, common room that is outside of town before you get to Crystalmere Lake that uh, can house the rest. Uh, but if you would like me to take care of uh, the most elderly or, or maybe the young ones, I could take 20 of them. Hmm. Absolutely. We'll see what we can do here. Um... So yeah, we're going to gather, I guess, the elderly and the youngins <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> to stay here. 20 people. All right, so 20 of them, uh, you know, they're, they're reticent to split up, but they realize this isn't, they don't really have much of a choice at this point if they want to. Uh, can we split off some of the provisions as well, just to ease the burden? Um, who are you asking? Uh, just ask, sorry, just ask some out of character. Um, okay. So, so we have provisions, obviously, we would gather a lot of the travel uh, for the 20 people, so we're not just dumping people, we're, we're giving some food over as well. Uh, to... Yeah, so the uh, lady, Renee, you know, she hears you guys uh, sort of talking about provisions. She's like, oh, you needn't worry. We, we have everything we need to take care of our capacity. And again, we have capacity for 20 more. Uh, the villagers, uh, the, the citizens of Saws are, are very generous when it comes to situations like these. And these times of woe require charity. And that's what we're here for. That is very generous and gratefully accepted. So... That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so 20 of them is uh, split off. Do, the, do you guys lead? Uh, she directs you to the other common house. Do you head off to there? 
Yeah, I'll take the rest yeah. of the good part. Okay. So, uh, Anik, you did not pass uh, the Tomb of the Last Heroes. You did see a signpost when the rest of the group split north. So, this is a choice of yours. Do you continue north with the rest of the group, or did you split off to go to the Tomb of the Last Heroes? So he at first he started to walk towards the Tomb of the Last Heroes, but then he thought about uh, Slash and Kylie and the last time he left. So he's actually is going to bite his lip and, and stay with them. But then later when he, he hears that uh, uh, Lady uh, Valinor mentioned that there is going to be areas west of the town, he volunteers to go with that group because it passes the Tomb of the Last Heroes. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll help that group. Uh, we I can go now if you want. Um, cricket, I, cricket. I, <laughs> I was like, don't look at him, don't talk to him, and he'll stay with us. Uh, Come along, Kinder. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the, the village scalpers. It's your choice. Okay. So, Anik, what are you going to do? So he wants to go with the rest of the refugees that were going to be going west of the town, she mentioned. Right. I think yeah. the remaining 37. Okay. So you guys, uh, there's one main road that heads out west uh, again, you are going to you you can either go the route of going back the way you came and then hitting that road, or you can just go across the open land to that way. Uh, and it really comes down to whether or not you're going to stop by the in the last heroes. If you're not going to, then we can move on. If you are, I I just need to know what you're going to do. As a Anik definitely wants to Anik wants to stop at the tomb of the last heroes. Okay, so as the rest of the group is moving on, your your desire. Your wanderlust is just simply too much for a uh, reason or listening to them. So you end up splitting off. Uh, I'm going to deal with you in just one moment. So the rest of you are guiding the remainder uh, 37 of these refugees uh, to this other uh, common room area. You come upon this really dilapidated makeshift structure, but there's actually laughter emanating from inside, uh, hitting your ears and Aside from the bustling sounds of the village that you just had, the the really the torture of the journey to get here over open water and land and mountainous terrain, hearing that you actually see some of the women and children just break down and crying and like run in, you know, without even thinking about it. They're just, they're so overcome with the idea of happiness and, and welcome that they just don't want to stay in this, you know, sort of group knit anymore so that you know the elderly are being helped along and stuff and they sort of go in you see a woman uh with uh, a nice little uh, apron a nice celtic floral pattern design on it very very dirty she's sort of wiping what looks to be maybe berries or some sort of jam off on her shirt uh she has pointed ears she's a little bit shorter but she doesn't look full elf um and she comes out toward the three of you well well Looks like you brought me some new people. Where are you coming from? We uh, hail from Dolto. It's been a bit of a long walk, and uh, we're more than grateful for your help. Um, this is truly a fantastic city. Um, what you're doing for these people is uh, just absolutely admirable. Oh, flatter gets you everywhere, sweetheart. Well, this is just a calling. My name is Goldleaf. Sh uh, I'm sorry. My name is uh, Goldathus Shimmerleaf. What's your name? Cut out. My name is Goldath Simmerleaf. What's your name? Hi, I'm Angor. Well, hello, Angor. Uh, Are you going to be staying here as well? Naraka. Naraka. That is some dangerous territory. Uh, no, we will. Uh, we we need to head on as soon as these people are. Uh, we know these people are safe, which is looking like it. Uh, we need to go and petition the Knights of Salamia for help. Um, oh well, the strife is. Uh, come to other lands now, unfortunately. Right. Well, the magistrate's office is just right off of the jail on the east side of town. Thank you kindly. We'll head there. All right. Do I expect you to see you again? Are you coming back to check on these people, or are you just leaving them here? Um, it depends what happens with the conversation. Uh, ideally, yes, we'll have a chance, but our uh, cause is more pressing. We need to warn the knights. Um, we need to have some sort of action we'll we will need to return my goodness has something gone wrong i'm afraid so uh attacks have been taking place and it looks like they're more organized than just random bandits oh dear some lord move has been made, uh, 
over in those lands. Well, best of luck to you. I'm sure the Knights will be able to help you. Thank you, Gandhi. Rest assured, everyone here is going to be fine. Have a wonderful day. She, like, sort of puts her arm around some of the kids. You see um, Slash Henry come out. He's like, where did Anna go? I wanted to say goodbye. You obviously didn't want to say goodbye to you. Uh, oh. Did you say that or are you just so making a joke? Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Okay, so you guys uh, leave. You see Anik just sort of, I'm not Anik, but um, uh, Slash drop his shoulders and just sort of turn back around, grab the hand of um, uh, Goldathis and walks back into the, the common building. Uh, Anik, you are wandering, just skipping, happy, excited. You find this delicious pastry in your hand that you're not sure where it came from, but frosting is sort of dripping off your fingers as the sun is getting higher in the sky and warming it up. You are having a wonderful time. And as you start approaching the Tomb of the Last Heroes, you see outside surrounding it a cacophony of kender all over. And as soon as they see you, they just high-pitched voices, bouncing top knots, hoopacks weaving in the wind. They're calling out to you. Come over here, friend. Oh, it's so good to see another one. Tell us all about where you've been. Just all surrounding around you. Wow, I, I, I've never met any other kender besides uh, Terry Whistlefist. Oh, it's a sad story about that, but uh, it's uh, it's good to meet you. I'm okay, a so, future knight of Salamnia. Uh, does everyone need to take a break really quick? Because we've been going longer than we normally go for a break. Um, yeah, let's take a little... Let's little take a, a quick break. Remember, your mics are still hot, so you may want to mute them. Um, we'll be back, everyone watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, maybe five minutes, but it hasn't taken that long in the past, so we will see you all shortly.
Okay, we are back. Uh, we had to uh, lose a player for an emergency. Uh, we hope everything is going well. Uh, but we are going to soldier on here in uh, Torndale's absence. Torndale is going to um, stay back with the refugees and make sure that the transition is going to be okay. He's a little bit worried about how Slash and um, Henrietta are going to be dealing with you know, this transition, and so he's going to be in there playing some music to try to adjust the mood, as it were. <clears throat> um, picking back up with Anik, you were surrounded by a bunch of Kender who just absolutely start dumping their pouches out and putting their fists in your pouches, and there's a lot of going back and forth. What are you doing? So he's actually never been around a Kender before, except that one time. So he's actually, like, a little, like, uh, annoyed by it. Oh my so he's gosh. Be like, he's like, what? You know, what, you, what? and he's he's like, what? did anyone ever tell you you guys are annoying? What? No. Awesome. Annoying? I've never heard that before in my life. Everyone's usually pretty. I mean, other than shooing us away. Also, whose map is this? I just found it. That's mine. Tassie jumps up and down from behind a, a person in front of her. Hi, oh, that's you mine. She grabs it. She's like, you can have it if you want. I really like this little tassel you've got here. I know where this is from. When were you down in Plains of Dust? She's oh holding that a... ogre necklace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can keep it. You can keep it. I'm trying to find more, but you, if you have any more, let me know. I, I remember they're really good as a set. I would be very impressed if we ever saw any more. See this little lightning bolt? This little blue bead here? That's a signet of uh, thunder. You only Ooh. get these if you're working for Thunder. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So many good stories. But, hey, have you guys been able to make it inside the Tomb of Heroes? I remember my father saying they're Kender-proof. This uh, Kender walks up. Uh, he's like, my name's Gustav. No, we haven't been able to get in. For some reason, these knights seem to be very, uh, you know, aware that Kender are, you know, wishing to get inside to see, uh, you know, the hero Tasselhoff. They don't have to go inside to look up Tasseloff. I'm right here. And you see some other people. Wait, that's my name. My name's Tasseloff too. Well, how can your name be Tasseloff? Is my name's Tasseloff. Gustav looks at you. He's like, after the War of the Lands, every new Kender seemed to be named Tasseloff. So we've got at least 15 Tasseloffs right here alone in town. That's really cool. My name is Anik. Anik Overlook. Anik, it's Denier really City. nice to meet you. What are you doing in town? I have, like, a lot more names, but that's okay. I'm in town on an important quest. Ooh, all the Kender are, like, gathering around. What's the quest? Well, I'm not supposed to tell you, so you guys all promise not to tell anyone? Okay, Cross fine. Cross my heart. Ah, uh, okay. I believe it. So, we are on an important quest. We have to get to the Knights of Salamnia and have them come help save a town that was, like, half destroyed, but, but half good. And so we need to find the Knights of Salamnia and convince them. Do you guys know any knights? We know a lot of knights. There's two right over here at the Tomb of the Last Heroes. They're really good at their job not letting us pass. But, you know, and some of us have to be taken off to the inn or to, uh, to, their, uh, to the jail. But the jail's really nice here and they feed you really well. I always try to get caught right before morning because I love their breakfast. Some of it comes down right from the Inn of the Last Home itself. I hear Tika, Waylon, Majir makes all of the potatoes and they're delicious. Much better than Odix, but I didn't say that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've heard so many stories about that. But I'm on an important quest right now. Let me talk to the knights and see if I could help convince them. So Taz says, are you sure you don't need this? I mean, if you were defending a town down there, this is clearly a, drag a lesser dragon overlord's totem. Uh, sure, I'll take it. But I have to give you something that's very important too. I really like that comb you have in your hand. Yeah, it's yours. Thank you very much. Is it magical? Uh, sure. It does <laughs> tend to disappear a lot. Wow. She looks at it for a minute, and then she puts it in her pocket. She's like, oh, wait, you're right. It did disappear. That's amazing. I've got a magic comb. And she goes bouncing around down the street. <laughs> See? All right, so you walk up to the two guardsmen? Yeah. So you're like, stand back, Kender. You're not allowed up here. This is sacred Hell. ground. I am Anik Overlook. I father. don't care. Stand back. Oh, I have a lot more names, but that's okay. My father is the famous knight, Tristan Uth Watchtower, sure, knight of the Sure, sure. We get a lot of candor with Salamnic Knights' parents. You think we were born yesterday? 
No, seriously, he definitely is my father. You've had to have heard the story about the Kender that was adopted by Tristan Watchower, the Knight of the Rose. You see them looking around. Where's that damn city guard? No, we haven't. You need to leave. But um, I really need to speak to, like, your supervisor. Is there, like, a... Like, That's a not going to be a problem. Just go straight to the jail. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so they're pointing right across town, due east almost. A little northeast, but, but you know. But before I do, I always wanted to see inside the Tomb of Heroes. Can I just take like a peek? In unison, no! <laughs> you sort of bring these uh, two staffs to bear in front of you. Walk away, Kender, or we will use this on your head. All right, so, he go so then he goes back to the other Kender and it's like, is, they're is, like any holding you... their hands over their mouth, giggling. They're like, we wanted to see if they would actually use it on their head. They hit someone last time. Gustav is like, that was me. I still have a bump right here. It's messing up my whole top knot. Oh, Gus, I, I know someone who's really good at healing. The next time you get whomped in the head, you come find me and ask for Verkin Bumblebutt. Bumblebutt? <laughs> That's such a funny name. The other kind of like, Bumblebutt, Bumblebutt, Bumblebutt. Bumble butt. It's just this raucous chorus of bumble butt just echoing throughout town. Um, <laughs> and Verkin, out of nowhere, seemingly on the wind, you swear you heard your name chanted, but you're not 100% sure. Uh, strange. <laughs> There's ghosts. <laughs> okay, so you guys uh, are headed uh, straight to the, uh, the magistrate's office? Yeah. Okay. Yes. You enter the magistrate, or you approach the magistrate's office. It's right next to the jail. Um, let me see. Let me give you a little <clears throat> description here. Nestled between Valenwood trees, you find the city jail, and attached to it is the local authority offices. It smells of body odor from all the coming and going jail citizens. Some of the, some of them coming out of the drunk tank, and even some roaming kender taken from off the streets and basic common criminals. You can tell that it is in fact taken care of. The grounds are clean, the offices are tidy, the structures seem to be well kept, but you can't avoid the uncomfortable reality that this is a jail. There are less than hygienic people contained therein and it is just wafting in your face. Uh, but there is a, a sort of a door into the main office hall right next to the jail proper. Um. Right, so head in there. Is there a reception or somebody? Yeah, so as soon as you... I don't think uh, we have to just walk in, you know. Is there somebody I can sort of nod head at and approach? Not on the outside. Once you open the door, you do in fact hear uh, a woman um, calling out. Uh, and she seems to be around the corner. Uh, this is sort of L-shaped, like the entryway is here. You have to walk around a little corner to see this sort of secretarial desk. Um, it's a young woman... Uh, she, you know, well, I don't know. Does anyone have an A in their perception that's here already? Anik, you are coming. You're not here yet. Yes. No. I do. <clears throat> okay, so, um, uh, Verkin, can I get a perception check on you, please? Yes, uh, killers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that'll be a te total of ten. Ten, nice. Okay, so, um... You notice that she has like a, a pretty substantial rip in the sort of over shirt that she's wearing in this sort of uh, magisterial outfit. Um, but she's a very noble looking woman. Uh, she's definitely from Salamnic heritage. Uh, her hair is done up in these really tight braids that keep it really straight and tight off of her face. Uh, you can tell that there's a sort of muddy uh, boot prints going up to where she is. And it looks like she was cleaning off boots uh, behind her desk. As uh, you walk in, she sort of stands up, putting everything down beside. And she puts her hands in front of her. How may I help you, gentlemen, my lady? Well, we're here to hopefully speak uh, with the Knights of Salamnia. Well, if there's anyone that we could communicate with. So Holden Foldstaff would be the magister of this uh, Knight of Salamnia outpost. And if you're willing to speak with him, you could make an appointment with me. My name is Lady Henrietta Palanthus, originally. Uh, yes. How soon would we be able to meet with him? Splendid. She opens this... Uh, document this book and she's like running a finger down 
licks a finger, turns the page. You could see him in two weeks' time. Morning's the best. Uh, I'm afraid that's a little bit more of an urgent uh, case. Well, we perhaps have you actually traveled from Duntal. Duntal? That is quite a journey. Yeah, I'm afraid the village was attacked. We uh, we helped the defendant. Oh, heavens. Sadly, um, we had to bring a lot of refugees with us. Not the best of situations, but uh, due to the nature of the attack, it was not just random bandits, and we need to speak to the magister about this. Uh, something more sinister appears to be going on, and we really could use some help. Indeed. Well, that does indeed sound serious. I'm not supposed to do this, but due to the circumstances, perhaps you could approach the magister on his own time. He is broken for lunch, and he is in queue at the end of the last home, I believe. If he's amenable to that, then... He probably like wouldn't said, be, but if it is urgent, then that would be the fastest way to see him. We would not want to impose otherwise. This is very important. If you do not want to impose, then I suggest you make an appointment and come back in two weeks' time. I said we do not want to impose. Doesn't mean that we're not going to. This is, as I said, I laughed, she didn't. <laughs> she, <laughs> indeed. Well, best of luck to you, then. Guess we're heading there then. All right. So you guys had to pass by the end of the last home on the way here. You probably, uh, Verkin, you probably know where it is. But on your way out the door, that's when Anik is coming to the door. Well, Kender, <laughs> are you with us? Yeah. Where are we where are we going? Did you guys meet the knights? Did it go well? Did you tell them about my father? Well. We're headed to the end of the last home. To... Oh, lunch? Already? <laughs> that was a quick uh, meeting. Well, I suppose we might as well grab something to eat while we're there. So you guys are walking toward the inn? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. As you're walking toward the inn, um, you're looking around. The, the town just seems normal. Like, And I mention that because you've gone through some pretty perilous stuff in the, the past few days or the past week. And just seeing life normally, people waking up, doing their job, going to lunch, coming home. Yeah, like it's, it, it sort of takes you out of the frantic reality that you are on a timetable. You know it's going to take you almost a full week to get back to Duntoll. And in that period of time, what has happened? What's going on right now there? So you were uh, in your heads, you just keep in mind that there is this sort of pressure of time sensitivity. Um, you start to approach the end of the last home. It is this towering structure of a tree uh, and uh, the ramp spiraling all the way up. And there is literally a queue of people spiraling halfway down the tree, waiting to get in, waiting for their turn. Every once in a while, you see people coming out of the inn, walking down, and then they let another person in or so. Um, so you could be here a while um, looking at the queue of people from this side of this massive tree. You don't see anyone that looks like a knight like i mean i don't know what you're you're expecting to to see immediately but you don't see anyone in like full slamnik armor or anything like that right um joining us queue is going to eat up most of the day for um, sure at least a couple hours Anik, did you encounter any of the other knights well, there were two uh, at the that were standing guard. They were very helpful. They told me the best place for me to be is jail. <laughs> but then I saw you guys on the way here, and I decided, um, you know, that maybe we would talk to the knights first before going to the jail. Hmm. Um, that could work. Could you do me a favor, my friend? Of course. Could you hold us a place in that queue? Hold the place? Yeah, sure. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll wait here. Sure. And we'll we'll talk to your very helpful friends. But if you secure that place in the queue for us so that we don't lose it, so when we come back, you've got it secured for us and we can then uh, get to see the Magister. Could you do that for me? Of course. It sounds I'm, like... I'm relying on you now. I'm relying yeah. on you to make sure that we uh, don't lose this place in the queue. Yeah, absolutely. That The fact that you're trusting me with an important task, Absolutely. You are, you're an absolute gem, you know, and a most valued member of the team. Um, I'm glad we can count on you for this. Thanks, Angor. <laughs> Very nice. Doesn't know sorry. sarcasm. A nudge, uh, <laughs> <Derek>. <laughs> 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 
hit the Perkin. I just give a nudge and start <laughs> walking towards the Fall of Us heroes. You coming? All right. <laughs> Let's go. So you guys are walking back. Uh, people start lining up behind you, uh, Anik, and um, you start to notice that as you're slowly moving, you know, as they're sort of walking back to the Tomb of the Last Heroes, uh, you're noticing... Actually, you know what? You do. You have a, a acute senses. What are they again? Hearing and smelling. Definitely not seeing. So the smelling is being taken over by delicious food. And it seems like this line is going way slower. You're such a small person. You probably could just find a corner to sit in if you went up there on your own. So... Anger told me that this was an important task to, to get into the inn. He didn't say it was an important task to wait to get into the inn. <laughs> so this is where we need willpower rules? Because this is where it's like, ah, oh, right, do this. I think he would want me to get in as fast as possible because of how important the quest is. So he's going to try to, like, sneak his way uh, <laughs> past the line. Uh, as you're walking by, you actually find a, a pouch in your hand full of little coins. Uh, if you open it up, you notice that it's, it's you know, like copper and silver. Someone must have dropped it or something, but it's in your possession at this point. Um, you, you can hear people say, hey, hey, get back in line. You can't do that. And then uh, you see this rather tall gentleman with a very droopy mustache turn around, very rotund belly. He's like, bruh, bruh, bruh. what are you doing? You got cut in line, sir. So Anik is going to uh, spill the, the pouch of coins that he just um, got. On you hear the, uh, hey, those are my coins. So ho he's hoping to spill it so it like trickles down and then everyone gets distracted to try to pick it up. <laughs> well, you do definitely see that person coming up. You see the gentleman step out of line. He's like, I'm going to take you to the gentleman myself. Someone hold my line, please. Like he puts his or he tries to put his hand on you. Do you resist? Yeah, he tries to, like, get, get under it and sneak further up, up okay. the line. <laughs> He's like, uh, um, get back here! I'm the magistrate, I tell you, I will hold you into jail forever! You get your back, get, get back here, Kenda! Kenda! And you see a bunch of Kenda down below going, Hi, what do you want? We can come up if you want. He's like, Burr. And he's like, tries to, like, wedge his way past other people to try to get to you. And they're like, get him, Sir Holden! Make sure he doesn't get back here. So you. So, uh, so, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Good. I'm sorry. So Anik, uh, seeing the Kender at the bottom, says, "Guys, guys, this will be a fun game. Everybody, race to the top." Oh my god. Hoping that it'll cause like a distraction. Yeah. And then he could sneak up further. <laughs> Hold on. Was the magister in the queue? Yeah. We didn't see the magister. Yeah. No, the magister was in the queue to get into the end to eat. Ah, right. Oh, he's not already I, in, in? Sorry, I thought people were still petitioning him while he was in the inn. Oh, no, no, I no. I thought no. it kind of formed like a second line. Oh, no, this is just to get in and eat. Oh, all right, gotcha. Does Does Annika know what the magistrate looks like? No, you have no idea. Okay. And we were too far away, we did not hear anything Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Right, so, so you get to the door and then you just bounce off. Of, you're like looking behind you and you bounce off a belly right in front of you outside of the door. You look up and you see this gigantic human being just looking down at you, shaggy hair dripping over his shoulders. He's like, what's your name, Kender? I'm Anik Overlook. Anik the Nearsighted. Arrow Catcher. Straw Slayer. Knight of the Dinner Table. You see his grin just sort of widen. He's like, are you hungry, Anik? I am, but I'm on an important quest. It's more important than, than that delicious smelling pastry I smell. He's like, how about you come over here, take a seat at the bar. I'll have Tika take care of you. My name is Karaman. <gasps> like, like from the books? From the stories? <laughs> I got some stories for you. Come here, son. He oh puts his arm around. The other people I... are just like, ah, <laughs> like bummed that he let you in. <laughs> Uh, so we see you at the, ta uh, the bar. Before you know it, there's uh, uh, like a half glass of ale and a plate of uh, spiced potatoes in front of you. And Karaman is just sharing story after story, drowning your ears out. Oh, my gosh, Karaman, I read all about you in the history books from the War of the Lands. I, I can't believe I'm here. So um, as you guys I'm are having this conversation uh, down below, you two, uh, Verkin and Angor, get to the end of the last. Uh, you, you approach the Tomb of the Last Heroes and you see a mass 
of Kender, sort of picnic camped out in front of it. They're sort of playing games with each other, laughing and giggling. People are giving them a wide berth. And you can see the two guards standing post, just like keeping their eyes on these Kender, making sure they don't bother any pedestrians or anything like that while they're sort of doing their duty watching the, the tomb. Um, let me take Leighton, I'll What? Do you want me to take on Leighton speaking to these guards, or do you want to do it? I'll give it a go. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to head up to um, the guards and say, excuse me, gentlemen. Yes, madam? Um, we're here on a particular quest. We're uh, looking for any assistance we can get from the Knights of Salamnia. Well, you would... What information could you give us? I can direct you to the Magistrate's office. Uh, that would be the first place to go. We're on duty, and our duty is to make sure no one despoils this tomb. Yeah, we've been there. He's unavailable. Is there any? You could probably could find him in the end of the last home. Is... Looking at the sun's position over these clouds, it seems around noon, so he's probably eating. All right, so I turn to Angor. Should we is, head back? Yeah, is he the only person we can speak to? There's a matter of urgency that uh, requires military aid. Military aid. Well, most military aid would have to be petitioned out of this office, uh, the Magister's office, to Salamni itself. Uh, Vingard Keep would have to then uh, relinquish the soldiers, uh, depending on verification of the issue. And there's a lot of dots to dot and T's to cross, and you know you understand. Uh, unfortunately, I do. Um, if people's lives weren't at stake, I would be uh, more amenable to it. But we need to we if, need to speak to someone urgently. Uh, if it is that urgent, I would suggest interrupting his lunch. Well, I thank you, and good luck with your duty. Do you want to take some of these kinder with you? He sort of gives uh, a slight smile. I think you're doing a fantastic job looking after them yourself. We uh, we kind of have our own to look after. Have a good day. You too. Okay, I guess <laughs> we're walking back. Uh, back to the inn. Dun, yes. dun, dun. So you get back to the inn and you don't see Anik anywhere in line. And you do see people that you saw that were um, uh, sort of lining up behind Anik higher up, but you don't see Anik in front of them. One day I'm going to kill that Kinder. <laughs> Blasted Kinder. Damn. Nothing but um, I suppose we'll, uh, we're going to have to try and shift and see if we can find him. So we'll start walking up the, the outside of the queue without pushing in and maybe start subtly asking Did anyone see a Kinder here wearing dinner plates and <laughs> a rather strange disposition? <laughs> Uh, uh, people are very happy to point you to the uh, Yeah, Cameron Majir actually let him cut in line. If you get up there, you tell that fat oaf that I'm never going to come back here. Well, just tell him that, but I am going to be coming back. Well, if you allow us pass, we'll happily uh, deal with him and pull him out of your way. You're going to go get the Kender and bring him out of there? Yes. Absolutely. Be my guest. You see people start like leaning back up against the trunk and letting you sort of go up the trail or up the pathway. Yeah, yeah we'll do it. Um, I don't suppose anyone's seen the Magister as well while we're going here. You see a rather large man right in front of the door almost getting in. Turn around, he's like, my name is, uh, my name is Lord Holden Fullstaff. I'm the Magister of the Knights of Slamney in this town. What do you need, sir? Lord Fullstaff, uh, Sorry to come at you at an inconvenient time, but we have a matter of most urgency. Could be, perhaps, would be stepping inside be better than here, so we don't keep you back more than we have to? I don't normally exercise my authority and butting in line, but perhaps I could make an exception. He sort of rubs his belly a little bit. Yes, please, let's go inside. And everyone's just like, oh, come on, really? This is, again? You know, he's sort of like uh, complaining that he's like butting in line. He's like, this is of utmost importance, people. Have some sympathy. And he goes inside and Cameron's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I saw that you were back further. He's like, oh, Cameron Majir, this is a serious situation. Stay out of it. This is law and order. And Cameron's just like, Tika, 
And you see this woman with just massive curly red hair. She's a little bit older, but she looks amazing for her age. And she's holding this iron, this sort of cast iron skillet in her hand. Steps out from back. She's like, you know better than to button to my line, sir. Get back out there. Uh, Anik, you see them. Oh, oh my God, guys! I did it! I got, I got in here a lot quicker than than you thought I would. I was just about to tell Caraman about our urgent quest. I really think he could help us. Caraman looks over. He's like, <laughs> "I don't quest anymore, young man. I'm, I'm a little well." Pats and rubs his belly. That's uh, in the past for me. He's like, <sighs> "It's okay, Tiga. Let him in. Come on over." Uh, I've got. I was just telling him about a story. I traveled back in time to old Istar itself. And let me tell you something. If you ever want to lose a few pounds, become a gladiator. It will do wonders for your figure. As far as mine, uh, your full self, is there, would you prefer to sit? Uh, let me tell you what's of happened. course, I have a table set aside. He walks over, a couple of people were just like finishing up their dinner. He's like, you understand? Legal business, we might have to move along perhaps. And they just sort of look over at Caraman, and Caraman just sort of puts his hand on his head and just shakes it a little bit, and they get up, all huffy, kind of angry at the magistrate. He sits down, he's like, Tika, usual, please. Caraman uh, looks down at Anik, he's like, well, I suppose you have things to talk about. Have a great day, little man. It's an honor. It's an honor meeting you. You're a hero, too. Thanks. I'm here all week. <laughs> So we'll sit down with the magister and busy fill in on all the details of what happened, the, the attack in the village, um, the things that we'll find. You know, it is a, a very dangerous thing uh, living on those outskirts of the plains of dust like that. I'm not surprised that the town hasn't been sacked by now. Uh, certainly, there's a common occurrence, uh, people coming and going and whatnot. This is more organized. Uh, Bandits, rogue elements we uh, we prepare for, but not as uh, this was a military style attack. You see him sort of considering something is himself, going on, twisting his long mustache. Uh, no. We did find an artifact. Uh, Anik, do you still have it? Artifact? What artifact do you speak of? Uh, I may have traded it with another kender for this uh, dragon talisman. As you like sort through your, your, you pull out the dragon talisman. That's literally the exact same talisman that you had before, according to everyone else. Like they're like, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, the magistrate is like, uh, might I take a look at that? Sure. He like looks at it. He's like spins the beads around. He's like, oh, yes, this is a, oh, yes, I have kind of, this is a Unfortunately, we don't know too much about it. Uh, we we know it's of importance and it's. Uh, a sigil of some sort. These uh, bandits, as I say. Oh, these are not bandits. This is uh, no. this is Thunder's mark right here. Whoever attacked you was on orders of a lesser dragon overlord. I don't know why a lesser dragon overlord would be attacking Western Plains of Dust. He seems to have been comfortable in his territory up until now. Look, I would love to help you, but we're dealing with some problems of our own. Perhaps if you could scratch my back, I might be able to scratch yours, so to speak. Absolutely, but bear in mind, um, it's a week's travel. Uh, while we've brought refugees with us, there's still an entire village and people of uh, good noble plains people in the injured. Quite right, quite right. Well, you must understand this. He sort of like looks around, waves you in a little bit closer as he leans closer to the table to just sort of, you know, contain the, the sound. And he speaks a little bit lower volume. I'm not exactly at liberty to remove soldiers at the moment. You see, there's word of a Naraka's spy, a knight of Naraka that has infiltrated my offices here. And quite frankly, we don't know who it is until we find out. Uh, there's absolutely no way I could send any soldiers out if they happened to know that we were not in proper presence of the town. Well, they could come in and try to take it over. But I could not let that happen. If you could find out who this spy is, I can send knights with you. Do you have any intelligence? Uh, what do you know about this spy so far? 
The rumors yes. I've heard came out of a tavern on the outskirt of town. It's run by a hill dwarf of some sort or some make. He has uh, braids in his beard. Uh, he, he goes by the name of a uh, heron. He's in a tavern? Torindel's going to love this mission. <laughs> Poor Torindel. Yeah. Torindel's having the villagers. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave him to it for the moment. Uh, Lord Frostaff, as I said, we are desperate. There's even ourselves. We are not off the village ourselves, but we have seen firsthand the devastation these people are prepared. They do not care about soldiers, women, or children. If they start advancing, they're going to end up here. You're going to have more refugees and uh, more trouble. Of course, these are the times we live in. Which is why it's gap is imperative that you find this spy on my behalf so that we can go and help you. Adventures such as yourself shouldn't take too long in unraveling this mystery. We will do our utmost. Like, best. You need to understand, however, the Knights of Naraka are operating under the principal control in this region of Abanasinia, under Beryl Inthrenox, the dragon overlord, the green beast herself. Now, if in fact they have infiltrated my order, which I refuse to believe personally, but the rumor alone is enough to stay my hand in taking any other action. If they are in fact, they must be very, very cunning and have possibly been a part of my order for quite some time. Nothing recent. So if you just put those heads of yours together, perhaps you can resolve this matter and we can save this town of yours. Well, first off, we'll do our best. Tika comes over with the skillet and places it down. You know better than to butt in line, my lord. And she sort of like throws the um, ale down on the table and it splashes back on him. And he sort of wipes away. Oh, my dear, honestly, why would you do such a thing? Wasting precious ale. But thank you, my dear. This is going to be delicious. He looks up. He's like, you don't mind, do you? I don't like to talk while I eat. That is understandable. Not at all. An important man like yourself must have manners. So Guess we'll take our leave and uh, <laughs> yes. make our way out of the inn. Um, before we start, he'll put my arm around uh, Anik and make it look as if I'm dragging him out. Okay. Uh, all right, so you guys uh, leave the inn. Uh, you know that uh, he had mentioned uh, a in at the outskirts of town, uh, someone by the name, a dwarf, a hill dwarf by the name of um, Heron. Heron, thank you. Heron. Do you want to head out there? Yep, we will. Um, yes. Just as we're leaving out, I'll just run me the crowd. Got him. Thanks for your help. <laughs> so Round of applause breaks out. <laughs> Woo! Good job. Yeah. Like, thank <laughs> wow, you so I much. Think... They're starting to recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> your reputation Absolutely. precedes it. So. Um, all right, so you get out of town, you, uh, it, you know, it's getting later in the day, uh, you know, around two-ish, three-ish, uh, you get to the inn, this is a very seedy part of town on the western side of town, it's not that far from uh, the common uh, house that you left all the other refugees at, um, but as soon as you open the door, there's a dwarf who stands up on a, a crate or elevation device of some sort and looks out, come on in! We got ale, we got meat. Well, it's meat-ish. We can serve you over here at the table. He's like, uh, Suzanne, lead them to the table. You see this uh, really, you know, poor wench gal come about. She's like, please follow me. Yeah. So she takes your order. Um, and, you know, she goes back to inform the cook what you'd like, and she goes to get your drinks if you order drinks. Uh, what do you want to do when you're here? Just deal. Um... Uh Yes, we'd like to speak with Heron. Uh, you can see some people uh, sitting at the bar, like, lean back. like, he's at the other end of the bar over here. He's the guy who runs the place. Goes back to their drinks. Um, can you give me a perception him. check, what? Verkin? Yes. <laughs> mm, all right. 
A 12. You notice in the corner there's someone in this sort of tattered cloak. Everyone in here is, is sort of enjoying themselves if they're with other people or just sort of, you know, paying attention to their drink if they're alone. Um, this person seems out of place a little bit, completely cloaked over, just sort of sitting in the corner, uh, muddy boots, just not the best appearance. And certainly because they're not really interacting with anyone else, it strikes you to pay attention to it just for the moment. But you can go to the bar and Heron is uh, by there. What can I get for you, lassie? Ah. Firstly, I would like an ale. Of course. He goes over and starts pouring it out of the keg. Puts it up there. Anything else, my dear? Yes, we've been sent to speak with you from Sir Holden. <laughs> that oaf. Uh, that man is rounder than he is smart. Yes, well, he mentioned that he has heard rumor that there is a spy. Oh, what do you mean? Stop! What? Susanna, take over! Come with me. <laughs> like, yes, of course. No talk of spies in here. Please, come in here. So he goes to a back room. Uh, it looks like his own personal office or something. He sits down, puts his legs up, uh, lights a pipe, and he just like, Now, tell me all about this spy of yours. He's like, uh, Well? Do you need anywhere to stay tonight? I could accommodate. Possibly. But we're here to try to figure out um, any news about the spy we can from you. Well, I don't know anything about any spy. I know Sir Holden is always worried about infiltrators. But I have heard rumor about a murder that uh, Kender had witnessed out near Christomere Lake in the marshes. A Kender, you say? <laughs> They're like rats. They're everywhere. I'm right here, uh, guys. I'm right here. Up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, a spy of Nereka is what he mentioned. You don't know anything about this. I know that he has suggested that there is a spy, and he has reached out to me unofficially. He must have sent you here to me because he's the only other person that knows about this. And so I'm taking this on faith that you, in fact, are coming from him and not a spy of Naraka yourself. Of course. We're mm. not. <laughs> We're here. We uh, have our own business. problems to deal with. Uh, here is what I can tell you. If there is a spy, they're probably related to the murder that I heard rumor of now. What I heard, and I can't be sure this is true, so don't hold it on me if it's not, is that there was a messenger from Shalsi. That messenger came up murdered. Now, why would the Citadel of Light send someone to Salanthus, I'm sorry, to Solus, and turn up murdered? I can't answer the question. All I know is it's suspicious. And if there is a spy, that sounds very much like spy activity to me. Now, I operate on information for money. I've given you information. Perhaps you could, uh... Hmm. You see. So... I have a few coins in my pouch. Uh, kind of slide them across to him. Wonderful. Puts them in his pocket. So, the marshland is not far from here. It's over by Christemeyer. I don't know if that damned Kender, it's one of those afflicted kind terrified of their own shadow, that bunch. I don't know if they'll speak at all or if they're even in the area anymore, but I believe the city guard has not collected the corpse as of yet, or even been informed about it. What was the name of the Kender witness? Please don't say Tasselhoff. There's a lot of those. I have no idea, to be quite honest, and I don't care. Very well. Well, we thank you for your information. Your food is coming out, if you would just uh, be so kind to wait and then pay your bill. Absolutely, so we haven't eaten for a while anyway, so we may as well um, take stock and have a look around the bar. Okay. Yeah. The bar is, uh, again, it's filled with a bunch of locals. Usually, you know, this is more of a seedy type bar, so you see people who probably should be at work spending their time here. You got some people gambling on one side of the room. Uh, a bunch of people laughing and just, you know, talking. A couple of people drowning their sorrows and drink and stuff. Um, do you want to give me a perception check? 
Angor. 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 Terrible. Anik, you discover this really Nine. warm pipe in your hand that looks similar to the pipe that the dwarf was just smoking. Got nine. Nine? Okay. Yeah, it just seems like a, you know, a seedy inn. Broken, you gonna mention? I mean, more of seen? a bar than an inn, to be fair. But... Yeah, so for the hooded, mysterious figure in the corner, Am I able to do a reading of his aura? Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, do some magic. Okay. Uh, so, so we don't know about this, do we? What's that? We don't know about this because you noticed it. Yeah, she hasn't said anything about it yet. Yeah. So, so we'll just... not know anything until you discover what you discover. <laughs> yeah. And... Okay. okay. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So, spirit, right? Yeah, it's spirit. Uh, it, are you doing this instantaneously, or are you going to take a minute to do it? Hmm. I shall do this, yeah, instantaneously. Okay, so that's five. The range is near missiles, so that's three. That's eight points. Uh, instantaneous for duration? You're just going to get a quick read? Yes. So that's ten. It's an individual. That's eleven. And the general effect... 12. So the total of 12 is what you need to use for your cards to do it. Okay. Oh, very well. Alright, so my total is a 13! You do it. So you, you sense the aura, and there's more of an aura of fear emanating off of this individual, but also distress, like uh, concern, worry. Is what okay. you're getting. It's definitely not like anyone else in the bar. Like they're, you know, they're they're sort of they're, there's something going on. I mean, it, they could be late for their rent payment. They, you know, it could be anything. But that's what you're getting off of. Right, was so, that magic that you just did? What what kind of magic was that? Yes, you guys. I think we should question this mysterious figure over here. I sense something of concern about him. Perhaps we could get some information from him. I'll check his pocket. Uh, <laughs> You'll you, check his pocket. You, how about you watch our backs for one moment? Sure. And I casually walk over and just sit down beside him. Uh, it, it sort of turns its cloaked head, and as you're looking at the face, it's actually a human woman. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking in my notes here for it. Where the hell did I put her? I'll just... Well, anyway, so you, you notice uh, she, like, turns her head. Can I help you? Uh, I was wondering if I could help you, madam. You seem quite agitated. I'd like to keep to my own, and I suggest you do the same. Uh, I'd love to, but uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, might you have noticed a few things? I don't... I don't... I like to keep my head on myself. I like to pay attention to my own business. I don't like to get into other people's business. Oh. And I'd prefer you did the same. Well, I would have, but your head's been turned our way for quite a while. So uh, I'm just interested. What is so interesting about us to you? Can you give me a persuasion check? Wait, is it persuasion? What do they have here? Um, it's going to be presence check. Presence. Uh... Oh, God, I've got the worst... <laughs> nine uh, we're not using the map so I'm going to switch to this view nine nine um, I don't trust you how can I possibly trust you well all I can say is my business is not here and the sooner I can uh, resolve what I need to the sooner I can be on my way and if you can help with that that's always appreciated what do you need help with we believe that there's uh some outside elements running around this town, possibly causing trouble. Would obviously like to identify. You see her push the chair back from the table. She gets up. Good day, sir. And she starts to walk. Right. Um, get some pollen her. <laughs> okay. Uh, the uh, Holden is like, uh, hey, you didn't like your meal. 
He's looking well, at you. We'll be right back. Um, it's not all of us, though. It's just, is it just me? It's just you. Right I, I moved from the table yeah. to sit beside her, you know, casually. Okay. So well, as you're getting up to leave, that's why he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, don't, you didn't like your meal? Uh, meal's perfectly fine. Uh, I just need to take care of a little bit of business before coming back to enjoy it. He's looking over at the other people. He's like, you better not squelch on your pay, on your bill. Oh, God, is she gone now? <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you were talking while you were walking. She's just left the right, door um, as you're, you're saying this. Okay, right, so um, I'll flip a coin at him. He's like, oh, 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 he sort of bounces off the counter, and he grabs it, he's like, bites it to make sure it's real, mm, pockets it, goes about his business. So you get outside, and you see that she rounds around the back of the uh, little shack of an, uh, a bar that this is. Uh, so Anik and uh, Verkin, you see him uh, go over. They have a small bit of a conversation, and then she rushes out. He follows her. So Anik is going to stay like three feet behind Anger because he was told to watch his back. He's taking it very literally. You have so a he's... very boring back. Okay. <laughs> so he's there. Uh, Verkin? Okay, I'm going to finish my ale and follow Anik. Kill us, Alex. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, Angor, you're going around the corner where she went? Yep. Okay, you run face to face with her with her short sword out, standing there like, What do you want? What did I do to you? As I said, I just want to talk. We can fight if you want. I promise you it won't end it well. I don't want However, to fight, but you're following me. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I don't know anything about any murders. Really? I didn't ask about any murders, but seeing you bring it up, what would I need to know about a murder? She like looks around. Are you going to put that away, or do I need to draw mine? You, you can tell she's afraid. She puts the sword back in her she's scabbard. Look, I'm going to be blamed if they find this corpse. Because I was there, but I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. There was someone else there. I don't want to hang for this. I didn't do anything wrong. You have to believe me. Then help me help you. Look, I'm traveling up from Haven. I might have been running from an outstanding debt, but I didn't do anything wrong here. And I'm passing by Crystal Mirror Lake. It's the middle of the night, and I hear arguing. I just happen to step behind a tree and the arguing gets closer and I hear a female's voice is sort of rough and gruff and I hear a man scream and that's it. And then the, the woman runs away and I come out from around the tree and I see a man laying there sort of gasping and spurting out blood. I don't know anything other than that. I don't know who did it. I didn't do it. Okay. Was the woman human? I, I think so. I, I, I didn't get a good look at her. I was... Sort of hiding behind the tree. Uh, it, it definitely sounded like a woman. It, maybe it could have been, I don't know, maybe a half elf. Maybe it was a man with a, a light voice. I, I think it was a woman. Okay. Um, did the man talk to you before he passed? No, he was just spitting blood up. Uh, she ran him through. It was quite grisly, quite honestly. Uh, these things are never good. Um, where is it? If we go there, what if the guard walks by? We're all going to be complicit in his murder. We, uh, we'll look after you. In the end, not reporting something can be just as bad. You're, uh, we're working with certain people. We can help you out here. Um, I'm going to need a presence check to convince her to go with you. So this can be uh, done in unison that's... if you all want to chip in and try to help. Um, if it's in unison, whatever yeah. card you pull is going to automatically be Trump. If it's just you, then it's just your cards. Do you want me to pull mine first? Say I'm there. Uh, if they're helping you, then whatever card you pull is going to be considered Trump. So go ahead and pull okay. that card and then pull one from your hand or from the deck. Right. Okay. Uh, there's 10, there's 15. Okay. She's like... I don't know why, but I'm going to put my faith in you. Please don't disappoint me. I don't want to be hung. Not for a murder I didn't commit. Follow me. So, as I said, 
the day is getting longer. We're getting a little bit closer to dusk, but it is still light outside. The trees are casting long shadows. It takes probably about 35, 40 minutes to get to where she's leading you. And it's not on a path. It is straight through the weeds and tall grass and uh, it ends up being inside of a marshy type area. You start to see flies swarming one spot up ahead and she sort of stops for a moment. She's like, it's right there. It's right over there. I, I don't want to see him again. It, it's, it's been almost a full day. He's not going to be pretty. And you're, you're stepping in like marshes. So every step you take, water comes up. So this is going to be a, it's going to be a nasty sight. Lovely. Um, does somebody want to stay with her? Let her sit down. She's like, the two of us go forward. Uh, just, you know, she, she's not frail. She just doesn't want to go look at the dead corpse again. Yeah, like, but she, I don't want she'll her be okay. off in case oh, oh, there's something else. Mm, I'll remain with her. Yeah. All right, Alec, let's go take a look. You got it. You're going to need my eyes on this one. <laughs> They've always um, been so successful. Maybe your smell <laughs> yes, might be better than us. <laughs> <laughs> right, guess we're walking to where the body is. All right, the smell hits you before you see anything. It uh, is a decomposing waterlogged corpse, and it is vile. It's a surprise that there have been no wild animals that have gotten to it yet. Uh, and again, you haven't seen it yet, so you don't know 100%. But with the amount of flies and just this, this buzzing and the smell... It's almost taking you back to the grisly aftermath that ended the Diamond Company. Seeing those bodies of both sides on the ground is just one of those things you never really get 100% used to. Even though you're a professional, you'll soldier through it. It still kind of gets to you emotionally. As you come upon it, you don't know who the fuck this is. But it is a dead corpse. It is a male human. And it is laying in water that has soaked into its skin. You see flies coming out of every orifice in its body, including the one that was made by the supposed sword that went through it. And just blood is coating in this, this sort of brown gelatin mass floating around this, well, dead corpse. I uh, kind of rest slightly and um, hold back a second just to compose myself. Um, what I do is I draw my cutlass and use it almost like a prod. Right. Because I don't want to touch it, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll use my sword and just like lift up. If it's got clothing. Yeah, you know, it does. Like a, a, give a, me a reason check. A jacket check. or something, you know, can I lift that up to see underneath? Yeah, give me a reason check. Uh, Anik, you too. Reason. Reason check? Yeah. We're uh, getting, we've already hit our three hours. Are you guys okay to go a little longer? Yeah, I'll go a little longer. Uh, I'm happy enough. You okay, yeah. Ashley? Okay. Um, are, are you all right, Anik? Yeah. Uh, so Anik reason is a six, so fifteen. Uh, okay. What'd you get? I'm four. Four. My reason's terrible. Yeah. So Anik, I my mean, reason, uh, my deck of cards is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> well, make sure you're recovering cards after you spend them. Maybe you'll get a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe so, one right. One day we can all hope. <laughs> um, Anik, you recognize this tabard that he's wearing? That's from the Isle of Shasi. That's from the Citadel of Light. This is an official messenger of the Citadel of Light. This is definitely the the, the person that uh, she was talking about. I mean, I kind of figured that it would be, but um, we should also check the pockets. You can learn a lot about a person from their pockets. <laughs> hey, <Nick> uh, <laughs> All right, give me uh, uh, what are we going to use for searching? Uh, perception. Both of you give me a perception check, please. Oh boy, that's not much trust. You can do it! Uh, so, Verkin, <laughs> uh, this woman is standing by. She's like, How long have you known these men? Well, 10. Uh, Ten. Not that long, I suppose. Six. <laughs> like a like little a over week. a week? <laughs> yeah. She's like, But I do trust them. I don't, I don't know you. I don't know them. I don't know the situation. But I can tell you, there's forces that here greater than any of the four of us. And I don't want to be on the end of a, a noose at the end of the day. The gods will stumble across this. That damned candor will talk about it. And if he does, we're going to be fingered for it. I suggest we leave together. We can escape with them interacting with that corpse. Maybe we can even blame it on them. We can get out of our... Be, being the wrongful accusations of our own. What are these forces that you speak of? 
the Knights of Naraka. Are you not paying attention? They're, they're taking over everything. They're, they're already spying into the Academy of Sorcery run by Palin Magir, that oaf. They, they've already got their fingers in the Magistrate of the Knights of Salamnia here. They're everywhere. If they find us, they will kill us. And it won't be pleasant for either of us. If you have any doubt about their integrity, I suggest we leave now quietly. I don't doubt them, but could you tell me what have you seen as far as the spies go in town? All I know are rumors. Rumors that they've been infiltrated, the Knights of Salamnia. There is a dark night amongst them. We don't know why, we don't know who, we don't know where, we don't know anything. All I know is I came from Haven, and they already infiltrated the, the leadership there. They're already controlling everything. If they're extending up here in Abanasinia, it only makes sense. And I don't want to be here when they take control. Last time they took control, the whole town burned. Mm, yes, well, Guys, we got... I trust my companions to join us shortly. If you she just, just sort of gets close to you. She's like, me. just... Please protect me. I, I, I don't... I can trust other women. Men take advantage. They... Well, they're the worst. Of course. I may not look like much, but I can hold my own. <laughs> okay. So back at you two. Uh, you had a 10, uh, Angor. What did you have, Anik? Uh, six. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Angor, you're, you're prodding with your, your, your sword. You actually notice that the fist is sort of like uh, rigor mortis gripped around something. Um, as you sort of pry at it with your cutlass, the fingers sort of break in disgusting shape, <laughs> you know, directions that fingers shouldn't bend in. And you notice a, a strip of fabric in its hand. Okay, so grab it. How long has this corpse been here to be in such a bad condition? Um, well, I mean, it could very well be 48 hours. I mean, at this point... She came across it the night before, so, you know... Two Would days. I have an inkling of that? What's that? Would I have an inkling of that? Yeah. I'm not saying I'm a pathologist, but I would have a, you know... Right, but you've seen dead bodies. Kind of has been there for a couple of days. Yeah, you, you've taken care of soldiers that have died and done funeral rites and stuff. I mean, you, you definitely know it's been a couple days. At All most, right, so, a couple days. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, I take a cloth and examine it. Uh, it looks like a fine bit of cloth out of, uh, you know, just uh, a, a high cotton thread count. It does not look like burlap or anything like that. I mean, it looks like a nice piece of fabric. You know, it would have come from someone who had money. Or I wonder if this is what the killer was wearing. What's that? Maybe it was, I wonder if this is what the killer was wearing. Maybe got tore off during the struggle. Possibly. I'll uh, fold that up and put it in my jerkin. Okay. Uh, so, okay. um, can I get a reason check out of Verkin really quick? Yeah, let's see. Oh, my reasoning is weak. Oh. <laughs> I need to draw another card. I only have four showing. Go ahead and draw one. So, let's see. Yeah, that doesn't help. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alright, so... Daph does not like us tonight. No. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Eight? Eight? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to help. All right. Yeah. No, you're good. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You're content with waiting. Yeah. Okay. Anywhere right. Else? Have we finished searching then? Actually, eight does meet the average. I'll do that. You know that you can speak okay. with animals and plants. You might be able to discern yes. some sort of information that that they can't find through sheer inspection. Yes, okay. Um, the tree that the lady was <laughs> hiding behind. Okay. Yes, I'm going to attempt to um, make a link with it and communicate with it. Okay, so if you ask her where the tree is, she will show you. It's about 20 feet south of where the body is. Um, you walk up to the tree and let's, uh, let's just... Uh, do some magic here. So this is going to be instant, or are you going to give it some time to make sure it's it's possible? Okay. Do you have good cards in your hand? This is metagaming, but... Uh, oh, hang on. i got to draw one more. It's showing, like, six, but I have five. Yeah, it's, it's right. okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. top it. Right. If you feel confident so... that you can do it instantaneously because that's the highest cost, 
then that's fine. If you don't, then maybe take some time in this, you know, maybe 10 minutes or something to lower the cost. Hmm. Hang on, let me look at my hand. Again, this is metagaming. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be doing it, but... Well, I'm a little slow here. No, no, no. You know, yeah, it's I'm a gonna... new system, new at rules and everything. I just want to be helpful. Well, you could be good now while we're finishing off searching. Yeah. You guys do uh, cool. see her walk uh, away with that girl about 20 feet or, uh, you know, 20 some odd feet away from you in the marsh. And it looks like, you know, as you sort of you're examining it, like glance up, she's doing some sort of like mystical stuff again. You two are not really familiar with what she's doing, but that's what it seems to be she's doing, you know. No, I kind of appreciate it. That's why I wanted someone to stay behind with the woman to get more information mm -hmm. while we were doing it. If that makes okay, sense. So yeah. So uh, we acknowledge that it's working, you know, that's having somebody <laughs> behind and talking is getting that wee bit more out of her. Um, yeah. We'll search around the marsh, just see around the body to see if there's anything else being dropped. Good. Just the immediate, Okay. Uh, maybe about three feet around. Yeah. Just, uh, I'll just prod down with my sword to see if I hit anything, just slowly and in case something else is being dropped. Okay. Uh, well, as you're doing tracks. that, let's go back to Verkin. So you're, uh, how long are you going to take with this? Uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay, so that's a three. Oh. And the range is yeah. personal because you're right there. That's four. Duration, um, are you just going to have it be instant? And you're just, or are you going to yes. try to... S duration of the cast? No, that's invocation. So this is... You're going to want to communicate with this thing. So you're going to want to take more than an instant. Mm -hmm. So okay, 15 I, minutes. 15, so that's... um. Let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seven. The area is just individual. That's eight... And it's going to probably be troublesome, so 10. You're going to look at a 10, you're going to have to get over. Do you have that many spell points? Okay, let's see. What's here? Uh, yes, well, my spirit is an 8, so I think I'm pretty good here. <laughs> brag, humble brag, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to risk it and use a 1, because I know it is Trump. And check this out. Yes! I mean, it's a dragon. Is that bad? It's only bad if you don't make the number. Did you make it? <sighs> I'm at 17. Oh, yeah. You so. know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you reach within yourself and you're reaching out with your uh, inner strength and power and trying to tap into the, the intellect of this tree itself. And you just hear this deep, resounding sigh in your mind. Just this and this you know is a form of connection that you've made with this tree ah cool all right um do i know what kind of tree it is it looks like a really old aspen actually okay so it's not Great very aspen thick tree. i mean it's like you know like straight across you're looking at like 10 inches maybe at max yes so great aspen tree. Do you recognize this woman that's with me? You can speak to the trees. And the yes. sound of its speech sounds like wind through the aspen leaves, just like. Yes, it is a great honor to speak with you. Hello, little one. Hello. I have some questions I need to ask you. Ask. If I can answer, I will. All right. So, do you, perchance, recognize this woman that I am with? She's like, are you tell Are you actually talking to a tree? Have you lost your dog yes, on mind? I am. She's talking to a call. tree. <laughs> She's calling out to you guys. You're insane! She walks up to you guys. What the hell is going on? There's a dead man right here and she's talking to a goddamn tree! That's not the weirdest thing we've seen. <laughs> she's a gifted magician. So the tree, the tree responds, Show some respect I, to this great tree. I saw her last night. Yes. Did you happen to see a man fleeing the scene. The man lying dead in the water. 
was fleeing from town. Did you happen to see who was chasing him? I do not differentiate human appearances. At times I can discern gender, but we trees do not use such senses of identity. What could you tell me of last night? The man fled to the marshes, pursued by another bound in fabric. This being caught up with him, ran him through, and seemed to take a case off of his person, made of wood, may it rest in peace. I see. Do you know which direction this man retreated to? The murderer who felled that human returned to solace to the Valen Woods. Interesting. With a wooden case, you say. May it rest in peace. May it rest in peace. Hmm. I thank you for your time, Great Aspen. You may want to observe the mud. The mud around the fallen man? Indeed. Very well. We shall do that. Is there anything else you could tell me? Do not fell us trees. We have lived much longer lives than you, and we will live when you are ash. I will do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Eccentric trees over here. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for answering my questions, Great Aspen. Tell the woman next to you. Next time she hides behind one of us, not to carve her nails into our hide. It is an organ that is important to us. Oh dear, I will tell her that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's it, just the sound of aspen leaves in the wind. So we have been searching around the body. Yep. Let's... Can I get a perception checks? Oh, God. Everybody? <laughs> uh, they've been doing that while you were talking to them, so I'm going to see what they come up with. Oh, yeah. Right. Got a, um... got a three. Three, okay. Got a seven. It's like offensive, Ow. these numbers you're throwing at me. <laughs> um, I know I mean, what the worst cards I'm throwing out. It's all, what, what do you do? All right, so um, Verkin comes over, uh, and funny, you see me. them searching around. They don't seem to be coming up with anything, and that woman is like, got her cloak pulled tighter. The sun is going farther. The shadows are heavy, stretching over the area, which is probably hindering them from being able to search. But okay. you come with whatever information you've gained. Yes, so I was just having a conversation with this great aspen tree over here. You hear the woman go, um, ah! Oh, by the way, the tree said not to carve into its bark next time. That's amazing. I what? saw Torrent uh, talk to a wall once, but I, I don't think the wall <laughs> talked back. What did the tree say? She well, just puts her hands in her the head. tree mentioned that there was a man fleeing the scene. The one that had murdered this man lying here. And he was seen... Escaping back to Solace, carrying a wooden case. Also, what? the tree mentioned that we should investigate the mud around the body. So, 
I I'm, shall. So these two are like, we have been. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to start investigating around the mud, see what I can find. All right, give me a perception check. Oh, Alex rubbing off on me, I can't see anything. <laughs> 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 uh, well, check this out. Mm, 14 is my total. Not bad. So as you're searching around, uh, you're noticing a lot of footsteps over each other uh, steps, like sort of like pushing the mud down into the marsh, the water sort of obscuring it a bit. But you notice that there's a... There's like a little, uh, like a shiny something coming through uh, the marsh and through the water as you're sort of examining this spot. As you reach down to the water, I'm assuming you do that. As you reach down, yeah. you pull up a, a flask, uh, a very dainty, you know, small, maybe feminine sized flask um, with very ornate salamnic carving all over it. Um, it looks... It looks uh, very, very expensive, actually. Oh, okay, so I hold up the flask and I show it to Angor. Does this look familiar to you? <laughs> I recognize that. That's Salamnik, for sure. <laughs> Anik. Um, it looks like, like the top has, is off of it. You know, it's been unscrewed and it's on a little hinge and the, the top is off. Um, and who had a cute smelling? Uh, Anik? Uh, Anik does, yeah. Anik, can you give me a perception check that's Trump? Uh, perception is orbs. I can't do that. I do have um, an 11 total. Okay. You notice that there's there's like a vegetative under like uh, under scent so, like there's like a note that's hitting you that it's not ale it's not liquid there's something in it that uh how do you, you know it's just like residue that that's strange to you that that um you know doesn't really match up as he's looking at that verkin and you're sort of standing back looking at all these sort of mud prints around this little marsh area you're noticing like uh a drag from the step so it it, it looks like there's possibly a limp or something from the person that left the scene of the crime. Oh, okay. So you have powdery residue in this flask. You have a, a limp drag footstep. You have fabric that looks to be of, of value, or at least it would have been if it was still a part of its original source. Uh, you know someone came and murdered this individual. You know this individual is from Shalsi. In fact, bears emblems of the Citadel of Light. This is a messenger that if you're going to listen to the tree, had some sort of message case that was taken from its corpse. Yep, so it looks like... Um, I think we want to pull the body out of the marsh. Not that I want to, but uh, don't want to leave it in the marsh. We want to pull it okay. onto the bank because we're going to need to inform... This is obviously an official messenger, so they're, we're going to need to tell the city guard so this person gets uh, appropriate uh, repatriation back to their city. Yeah. Okay. Um, need to speak to the woman. Tell her, um, thank you very much for your help. She's like, you know, I didn't do it. Do you believe me? You believe me I didn't we do it, right? Absolutely, we absolutely believe you. Okay. Okay. Um. If we point, if you saw the cloak... And this person again, would you recognize them? <laughs> um, I, I mean, maybe. I, I, I think this might be bigger than you think it is. I, I, I think you're in more danger than you think you are. I think maybe you should just leave this corpse where it is and just move about your business. This is going to get our ugly. business says this. Uh, we are in orders from the magister himself to uncover this mystery, so... You're on the right side of the law here. No harm will come to you. The last thing I'll ask of you is if you accompany us back into town, if you recognize the person, just let us know who it is, and then you can go about your way. You're not being blamed for this. We are on the, like I said, we have a city guard on our side. We'll explain this. The, the last thing I will ask of you is just to do this one thing. She looks over at Verkin. 
Do you swear? I do swear that you are protected. Okay. Okay. I'll go with you. Right, so we're dragging the we're dragging the body out of the marsh just to have him land on the side so it can be recovered. Okay. Uh, are there any so, rituals or certain ways that they need their arms crossed or anything to be respectful? No, I mean, I think at this point you just need to alert the authorities so they can take over, you know, and, and get the corpse back to Chalcy. Okay. See it buried properly. So I don't have to dig a ditch for the, the body? I'm, I'm no. <laughs> okay. Weird that you're willing to dig a ditch for a random corpse. <laughs> Murderer! You're trying to hide evidence. All right. So I, what are you guys going to do? Where are you going to go? What's, what's up? Oh. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, we want to head back to Solace. Yeah, you're right outside of town. It takes you about 20 minutes to get back into town proper. And where are you headed? Go to go to the go to the magistrate's office, the jail. Um, where is that? The city guards are located. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they share the same building structure. Uh, the city guards are in a separate like room than the magistrate's office was, but it's in the same building. Okay. Go to the city guards. Then. Okay. So night has fallen at this point. As you're coming back into town, it's still early, so it's dusk. It's just, it's not 100% visibility everywhere, especially with these huge Valen woods and the massive canopies that they cast onto the ground. It makes it seem much later than it actually is. Uh, you can't even see that silver single moon in the sky. You uh, walk over to the magister's office and um, you see a woman, uh, the woman that you saw when you came in, the secretary, sort of locking the door uh, as she's sort of backing away. And she turns around and sees you and she's like, oh, it's wonderful to see you again. Did uh, Lord Falstaff tell you of our meeting? You hear a <gasps> sound, and Verkin, you remember that her cloak had a rip in it earlier, and you remember that she was shining, cleaning up muddy boots as well. Yes. Do I know that um, Angor has a little strip of fabric? <laughs> I can only imagine that you guys would have had that conversation, but it's up to you. <gasps> Did you share that information, Angor? Yeah, but sure, we're, we're together and uh, obviously you explained the, the woman why she's protected and the fact we're in. So yeah, we would have uh, shared that information. So yeah, you know. So we just got back from uh, examining the corpse of the murdered man out in the marshes. Dear Lord, what murdered man are you speaking of? You have not heard? I have not, I'm... I'm a humble secretary. <laughs> Certainly you understand that I don't, I'm not privy to every conversation that happens under these ceiling. Understand. Can I, uh, you, <clears throat> can I ask you, what happens to your uh, garb there? Oh, well, you know, I mean, traveling through town, you, you run across bushes and clothing gets snagged from time to time. It's, it's something that happens normally, you know, occasionally anyway. Uh, you see the uh, magistrate sort of jovially maybe had a couple drinks more than he should have and stayed longer than he should have at the end sort of staggering back to his office like oh oh lady Herrera. Oh, honestly it's so good to see you this fine evening oh and it's all of you <laughs> i take you've uh, discovered the the Secrets we've discussed? <laughs> Keep it on the down low, you know what I mean? Well, absolutely, Lord Foster. We may have some information. Um, we were just speaking to your secretary to uh, maybe point us in the right direction of something we need to see. They had mentioned to. that there was a murder. I'm not entirely sure if they're the murderers, but perhaps we should detain them for a while so we can discern the truth of the matter. Boy, uh, if there is a murder, then we must call the city guard. By all means. Uh, they're right next door, just... Get in there, lady, and uh, we, you and I will handle this. Uh, I trust that all of you will wait here until we can get to the bottom of all of this. You see Lady Henrietta sort of limping as she's going into the other building. Uh, my lord, uh, if you don't mind, I'll come with you. Oh, he's not going anywhere. He's staying with you. Are you saying that to the lady? Oh, I thought he was going with... Sorry. I no, no, yeah, sorry. Going... 
So yeah, he sent Lady Henrietta to go get the city guard. He's standing here with you guys, just keep an eye on him. Um, maybe one of us should go with her. What do you mean? Uh, just, these are dangerous times, my lord. It's just the city guard, and it's right here. It's, there's nothing to be worried my about. My lord, if you would rely on me to help you for this moment. Perhaps you could tell me what you're talking about. Maybe a discussion needs to be had after we speak to the city guard. Sure. Indoors. I know, know what you mean, but, well, if you so insist, uh, go ahead. I will follow you. He right, watches you guys. Want, if if you enter the... In. I'm sorry? We don't want her going in and setting the guard on us. That's going to be uh, <laughs> awkward. I don't want to kill any guards. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, no. oh, I hope you don't. That would not go well. <laughs> that would not be advisable. All right, That's so... why we need to keep a rein on her. And not oh, let her know that we know. Yeah. Um, okay, so you follow her into the city guard's office? Yep. Okay. Uh, do, do Anik and uh, Verkin go in as well? Uh, yes. I'm going to stick with uh, Angor. Um, <laughs> I'm going to remain... want to whisper, um, Birkin, what? while we're walking inside, do you want to whisper to our friend that accompanied us back? Cause you guys are looking around and she is her. not there. Like, from the I time that you were talking to Lady Henrietta to the time that the Magister came over... She... I was hoping you were going to whisper to her, is that her? With her gasp. You know um, oh my gosh, is that lady still with us? <laughs> That's. <laughs> no? No, she's not. She's not. No, she's not. She's not with you. So she followed you there. As soon as she saw that woman unlocking the door or locking the door up as she was leaving, she gasped. You guys engaged with that woman and then the magister came over. You turned around, she's gone. That was her gasping. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that wasn't clear. Right. That was that's, her gasping. Right, so, that's kind of confirmation on its own. <laughs> kind of on the uh, right. I am still with uh, Sir Holden, and I'm going to show him the flask that I recovered from the mud and ask him, "Does this look familiar to you?" But yes, it does. This is Lady Henrietta's. What? Where did you find this? I'm sure she will reward you for finding it and returning it to her. Uh, interesting. I shall wait here for her return, then. Very well. Uh, I, would you like to wait inside? I do have a fine brandy from Salania that I could crack open, if you will. Uh, I shall wait outside. <laughs> very, very well. I, I will go into my office and enjoy alone, then. Uh, you feel free to come in whenever you like. He unlocks the door, goes inside, and you hear him stumbling around. It sounds maybe like he fell. Something big crashes. Sounds like he sort of laughs something off, or he's like talking shit to a chair, and then he sort of disappears around another in another room or something. Uh, you guys enter the the city guard watch, and you see Lady Henrietta turning around, fury in her eyes, pointing at you. He murdered someone back in the marsh. I have evidence of it. I have witnesses. And I can tell you everything you need to know. He murdered someone. Arrest them right now. And the city guard is like, Yes, my lady. Yes, of course. What do you guys do? Oh, right. I was hoping you were going to stay with the <laughs> master. He's just in the next building. I mean, he's not far. Right. Okay. Uh, hold the master set us here. She's like, they're lying! They're lying thieves and murderers, and you must murder them now! Take care of the execution! We do not have time for this! And they're like, calm down, Lady Henrietta. Certainly, you must understand, we can't just murder people that are accused of crimes. There must be a trial. Now, gentlemen, if you will... Oh, Kender. I'm going to ask you politely, and this is as polite as it's going to get. Please wait in this holding cell. We will get the magistrate and we will investigate the accusations at hand. If you're found guilty, you will have a fair trial. Don't make this harder than it needs don't. to be. And you step back to we uh, sort of set ourselves. We're on the magistrate's orders. They're like, we will get the magister. And he's like, Francis, go get him. I'm just like, yes, sir. 
And he sort of like scoots, tries to get as far away from the Kenner as he can as he goes out the door. You see a, a guard, Verkin, come out the door, like look at you like, what are you doing? I'm um, waiting here for Henrietta to return. Are you with the two men that just went in the city watch? In the office? I am. I think perhaps you should wait in there. And he walks past you and goes inside. And you can hear like some, Sir! Sir, are you okay? Sir! What is going on here? And, like, a bunch of commotion going on. He runs out. Healer! I need a healer! There's something wrong with the magister! Someone help! Okay, so I'm gonna run into the room. You're all, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm a healer. <laughs> You run in, and he's foaming at the mouth, and he's just, like, sort of laying on the back. His eyes are wide and bulging red. It looks like he's choking or something. Ah, uh, great. Okay, so... Uh, he appears to have ingested something, I would presume. Um, What's that plump sort of smell? Possibly. What's that? With a heavy plump smell, Possibly. Possibly. A powder residue that might have been held a flask. Possibly. I didn't give him the flask. No, you did not. I just showed it to him. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to heal him then. Okay. So instantaneous is five. Um, range is personal. That's six. Instant is seven. Individual is eight. And how much are you trying to heal him? Are you just trying to, like, rid the current condition? Or are you trying to, like heal potential wounds from the inside? Like, what, what effect are you looking for? Mm. Maximum healage. <laughs> well, keep in mind, you have to beat that number with your card. So, you're at nine right now. Mm. Uh, troublesome is going to be 11. Uh, hindering is going to be 12. Impeding is going to be 13. Where do you want to go? Uh, okay. I'm gonna go on the, the low end then. Irritating! <laughs> okay. Um, so that's that's 10, I think, right? So if you can beat a DC of 10 with your, your hand of fate. <coughs> yes. Here. So you're in there doing that. Um, let me know the number when you get it. Um, Anik and Angor... 12! Oh, nice. Okay. So... You see, you feel that there is a, a toxin in his bloodstream that is uh, causing his throat to uh, swell. And so you are uh, using your inner power to wash that toxin out of his system. And you actually see, though it's not tangible to anyone else, this sort of black ooze leaking out of his eyes and ears and nostrils as you're, you're finishing healing him. And he just sort of gasps for breath finally. Like, you know, his eyes start bulging just from finally getting air in his system. And he's like gripping you. He's, oh my dear girl. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. You don't know it. <laughs> and he's, he's doing his best to breathe and thank you. Um, inside, you guys see a guard, or hear a guard outside screaming, yelling. Lady Henrietta looks over. The guard yanks his sword out of his scabbard. And he she swings it around at you. Get in the cell right now where I will run you through! Looking at you and Anik, Angor and Anik. Uh, not your best decision tonight, my lady. <laughs> the city guard's like, what? Hey! We, lady Henrietta, give me my sword back. This is un... <laughs> this is untoward behavior from you. What are you doing? The guard comes running in. The magistrate is dead! The magistrate is dead! I saw his dead body! Oh my lord, we must call the city guard! We are the city guard! Help! Help! And he goes running down the street. Uh, okay, I draw my sword and I place myself between the door so uh, Lady Henrietta, so she can't escape. Okay, what are you doing, Anik? So Anik is like, she's a spy, she's a spy! Impersonating a knight is like the worst thing you could do. Yeah, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Walking around saying you're a knight. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Sully in the <laughs> Sully in the reputation. Wearing dinner plates. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, you're you're calling out against her. She's like, "Don't listen to that rat vermin, Kenda. You know me. I've been here for years. You can't disparage my character simply because you waltz into town and want me to be some manufactured bad guy. Get him, Sven." 
And Sven, the guard, is like, Lady Henrietta, put my sword down. Give me my... And he lunges at her. You see her sort of back away and slice at him. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, Sven, leave us to me. And I start circling around uh, Lady Henrietta. What like, do just do disarm her. We need to take her into custody. The I said, getting... leave it to me. He's like, I am a city guard. You are... I don't even know who you are. Now, you... Disarm her, and we will take her into the cell. So Anik is going to run and jump on her. Oh my god. Like, it didn't work for the ogre, but... We'll Who knows? It could. Give me a strength check. <laughs> oh dear. <This> awesome. <laughs> nah! He's like a That's weird a monkey or something. 14. Bah! 14? <laughs> 14? Yeah, yeah, you jump on her. You absolutely <laughs> jump on her. She's like running, like swinging the sword around. Um, Angor, you're going to have to sort of like back away just a little bit because she's sort of, you know, dealing with this damn Kender jumping on her face. The guard's like, whoa, whoa, grab her arm, grab her sword arm. What do you do, Angor? Right. Is she near the cell? Yeah, yeah. Right. I want to plant a boot straight in her chest to kick her back into the cell. Okay. Give me a strength check. I've got the bloody out of weight of a kinder as well. <laughs> oh god, it's still my cards. Oh, <laughs> Matt Torrendale's not here. Oh man. Nine. Nine? No, sorry, ten. Okay. Um it's not enough to kick her in the cell, but you do make contact with her, her body. It like she like Lunges back, Anik, you're like thrown into the bars of the jail cell as you're like grappling her and get kicked from some other side. Um, you take a half a damage. It's really just service. You don't have to mark anything down. It's just, it does bruise you a little bit as you like make contact with the steel bar. Um, the town's guard, you see like reaches, like lunges down at her feet and like wraps his arm around her feet after you kicked her and she sort of stumbles back. So she can't really move at all, but she's just like wildly swinging the sword trying to get it up at um, Anik, I need you to do an evasive attack action. This is going to be an endurance check. Okay. As she's like wildly swinging the sword, trying to hit you on top of her. Uh, what's Trump on that? Uh, uh, for That's Helms, I think. Oh, okay. For endurance. Yeah, Helms. Okay. Uh, seven and six, so 13. Okay. You avoid getting uh, cut by the sword. It does sort of, the flat of the blade sort of bounces off your, your tuchus a little bit as she's like wandering around trying to get the, the sharp end of the blade at you, but she can't even see someone's holding her damn feet. Back over to Verkin. So <laughs> this guy is grappling you just like, <gasps> and you're just getting this waft of liquor off of his breath right in your face. And he is, and also there's like a little bit of indigestion. You're getting this acidy <laughs> tinge from his uh, digestive system as well. He probably ate a little bit too much. It's kind of gross. Uh, but yeah, he's just grappling at you. What do you do? Uh, sir, I was waiting just outside the door. What happened as I was outside? I cracked the brandy. <laughs> oh, I, I think it might have turned. Oh, God. I have a heartburn. Oh, could you perhaps reach over for the peppermint plant over there and give me a few leaves, my dear? Would you be so kind? Um... Yes, peppermint should be good from an instant such as this. So I grab some of the peppermint leaves, okay. hand them to him. You start to, to hear nod. screaming and scuffling coming through the wall at the adjacent building. He like scarfs down the, he, he takes the peppermint and sort of rubs it to release the, the, the oils of it. And then he sort of like consumes it. It's like this genuinely, generally helps me. Oh my dear, that brandy is atrocious. I, almost killed me. I've never had such bad brandy in my life. Whew. I might have to empty that vial. I, I might, I say. It was expensive. Uh, who else has been in this room? Oh, just my secretary. He's sort Let's of like see. sitting oh. up on the ground trying to regain his equilibrium a little bit before he tries to stand up. Uh, at this point, I'd like to investigate the room. Just like, look around. No. See if I notice anything. Perception check. Peculiar. Okay. <laughs> okay. While you're doing that, just let shout out your number when you have it. Anakin yeah. Angor. Angor, what do you do? Right. Um. I want to step on her arm with the sword. 
the whole of time. Mm, she's standing up. Oh, she's standing up now? I thought yeah, she was no, he, he has her, her legs like pinned together standing. So she's like, you know, like a, a, a bowling pin, basically. You got Anik on top. He's at the bottom. She's flailing around. She's like leaning mainly on the, the edge of the door, the bar of the, the, the cell door itself. And so she, you know, she's not fallen down at this point yet. All right. Um, Seeing I have the cutlass in my hand, I want to use the help. I just straight up punch her in, it, in the face to stun her. <sighs> okay. Strength check. I got an 11. Okay. Perception. Um... Does it take much strength that the one on a I just need to make off? a connection. <laughs> oh dear. Let's okay, let's let's uh, we're gonna have her. It's gonna be a little hard because break. there's a kender um, on top of her and she's flailing around, so right, okay. Um because I want to succeed, but not too much. <laughs> but uh, uh if he gets a three, does he punch me instead? <laughs> there is a very real possibility that he strikes you. What's that? 15. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, he absolutely hits her right on the side of the head as you're like swarming around to avoid the sword cut of her flailing. And she goes down like a sack of potatoes. Just poof, knocks out cold. Um, you had like seven strength, was it? Yeah, seven. And what was the sword bonus on that? Uh, what was that a sword card? Sorry. The, the no, no, no. Card. I mean, the, your weapon you're using. Oh, sh I did you do anything more than just your strength? No, just use that. No, just wanted to. Seven, okay. I don't want to stop. What I want to do was just because I have, you know, Cutlass has a like a hand guard. Yeah. So I just wanted to use that nose in a punching motion. Okay. Um. Yeah, she goes down like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Um. Cut over to Verkin. You. What was your number? Eleven. Eleven. You notice on his glass the same smell of residue that was in the flask. Now, are you okay. staying inside of his room, or are you checking the entire, like, office space? Because there's the, uh, the waiting room outside of his office, which is the secretary sort of welcoming room, and then there's his room that he was in. I guess at this point, I'm going to step out into the office after leaving him with his peppermint sleeves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he seems to be doing rather well, actually. I mean, you know, because you healed him, but he's... He just thinks he had, like, a bad glass of brandy or something. He has no idea at this point. So you go out. I'm going to need you to do another perception check. We're going back over. Anik, what are you doing? Okay. So if, if she's uh, she's knocked out? It seems like she's completely unconscious. Oh, okay. So um, he's going to say, um, Angor, uh, we should we should see what's going on with uh, with Verkin. Yeah, yep, let's get her to sail first. Sven, like... Okay drags her in there, closes the door, locks the keys, like, I don't suppose one of you could go after my my guard who just ran off like a maniac. I gotta deal with this. Anik, would you do the honors? Sure. And he does the knight salute, and he runs after the guard. Which way did he go? He knows I'm not a knight, right? <laughs> he runs the opposite direction. Oh, no. <laughs> he runs the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> so you run off. Um, Angkor, what are you gonna do? I'm going to walk next door then, seeing she's secured. Okay. And uh, see where so, I Bergen, out. what'd you get? So I, got an, I got an 11 for my perception check. An 11? The so you're looking office. through her drawer, and you actually see this sort of scroll case that's uh, in her uh, in a drawer in her desk. Yeah, so I'm going to take that, and I'm going to open it. Okay, as soon as you take it out of the desk, that's when Angor comes in. So you see her behind the secretary desk taking out, like, a scroll case or, like, a, a small map case. In her hands. Ah, that would be uh, what the messenger was carrying in. That's the things. I believe so. Sir Holden is uh, in his office. He's uh, not doing too well. Yeah, the main one. I feel quite well, actually. I think I might have another brandy to soothe my nerves. Uh, sir, I think we'll find your spy. I'm sorry. I said I think we'll find your spy. The brandy's not a spy, silly man. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> so the scroll. He almost died. Oh, well, he's drunk happened. as shit already. Sir, um, could we have a bit of clarity for a moment? Maybe a celebrated drink afterwards? Certainly. What, what is it you're looking for? Why are you in her desk? That's Lady Henry's belongings, I'm pretty sure. I believe we've made a connection between 
the man who was murdered in the marshes, and something here. I'm not aware of a man murdered in the marshes outside of tonight's conversation outside. What is the man in the marshes? Say again? That's what we were coming back to tell you. Well, I suggest you get to it then. It's been gotten to, and your secretary decided she wanted to engage in a little bit of swordplay. Why would Lady Henrietta attack anyone? Maybe something to do with this, and I pull out uh, the piece of cloth that I had in my jerkin. Oh, that's that's from her cloak, clearly. Look at the design pattern here. She loves this. Uh, why did oh. you tear this off her cloak? Um, I actually pulled it from the hand of the murdered man who... You uh, don't say... I'm afraid I do, my lord. Could it be? Right under my nose! No! Could it possibly? He has a Where flask. is she right now? He has a flask. I have the flask. I've already shown it to him. Yeah, he, he already saw the flask. All right. I don't know. In character, I don't know. So, um... Yes. Do you, um, so, what are you doing with the flask? There's... Uh, how much Go ahead and talk out of character. My character fine. doesn't know, but my, my brain does. Go ahead and together. talk out of character. I'm trying not to mess up the plot, but... <laughs> talk out of character, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, so I bring up the flask. The flask, the residue, the poison, the poison and the brandy. Okay. Comes from the flask. But so, I don't, my character doesn't know this, so yeah. I'm... Try not the steamroller over the plot. <laughs> yeah. No, I dig it. So Where you know that the, the clearly the residue oh, that you found oh. in her flask is the same residue that's on the glass of brandy that um, he had drank from, Sir Holden. So you clearly know that she tried to poison him at this point, and she was trying to get out of town before anyone noticed, but you guys just stumbled upon her before she could He's actually drink the brandy again yeah and he was he was going to too He's to go drink the brown. that's what i'm trying to do <laughs> <laughs> don't drink Birkin, the brandy Birkin, Birkin, yeah. so um verkin what do you uh, what do you do with this uh, map flask what do you do with the i'm sorry the flask and the the map case or the scroll case uh the scroll i'm holding on to that for now so i'm gonna bring out the flask and yeah, that same... Suggest that we go back into Sir Holden's office. Yeah, that to... note that you had off the, the the flask itself is the same smell you're getting when he was exhaling in your face, and it's the same smell when you were investigating the room that you noticed on the rim of his glass. So, I mean, one plus one equals his secretary tried to kill him. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to tell him to uh, go retrieve his flask of brandy. Okay. He so walks over, he grabs it. The, sense. the glass, he's like, Would you like me to pour you a glass? I have another glass. I don't want you to drink out of mine. I don't. Really oh, no, please, pours. no, sir. I merely want to uh, bring to your attention the aroma from the flask. And oh, it is a very brandy. good year. Brid, what is that? What is that? A, a musk? What is that smell? I can't I quite believe identify. that's what sent you into seizures. Really? Moments ago. Are you suggesting I was poisoned? Absolutely. By the gods, I think Lady Henrietta might be the spy. But we had such a good relationship. We had jokes. She laughed at all of my anecdotes. Every single one, even the ones that weren't funny. I thought she genuinely liked me. Trying to kill me, I will see her hanged! I will see her hanged! And he like stomps out of the room with this renewed sobriety and rage as he walks across the hall. What do you guys do in the room? Where uh, is so it? The note. She's in this, uh, she's taking a sleep in the cell. Um, <laughs> she would nap about her life choices. <laughs> nappy time. Excellent. So she is not Shall we read the note? Yeah, so I go over to the desk and open up the scroll. <laughs> you open the scroll and it reads this. To Sir High and Mighty Salamnic Knight, this is Terry Whistlefist, merchant of rare antiquities and purveyor of exotic rugs. I was traveling to Duntoll from Kerr when my wagon was waylaid by a human ogre and a few draconians. I escaped on my trusty donkey, Ankles, and made my way to the Citadel of Light, 
While attacked, I heard the ogre and human discussing no survivors to witness the invasion. The ogre was wearing a necklace with the mark of thunder, the blue dragon, I swear it. I suspect they're trying to provoke the overlords to fight over Duntoll. I'm leaving with five mystics from the citadel of, uh, to protect the village. Send knights immediately, and we will arrive at the same time to defend the village from thunder's schemes. I hope you're having a happy mustache day. I hear they're very important to your kind. Interesting. Right, let's, uh... Let's chase after Lord Fuldoff then and uh, give him the happy news. <laughs> so you go oh, into the uh, into the office, and I mean, this you know, all cards are on the table at this point. He knows that she tried to poison him. She's definitely the spy. You relay to the information about the body. The city guard has gone to dispatch the body. Anik, you found the guard that was sort of beside himself. Uh, did your best to calm him down. Uh, he has come back after stopping at uh, maybe a seedy tavern and getting a drink. And uh, everyone is meeting back at the city guard's office. More guards have been woken and called in to do some more investigation. The coroner has been called to sort of check out the body. This is sort of medieval-ish fantasy time, so it's not like science or anything. It's really just soggy body. There's a wound in the chest. Some people said they saw a murderer. They're going to put him on trial. Ends up, Lady Henrietta is the one that is fingered for all of this. She is clearly the knight of Naraka, acting as a spy in the town of Solace, you have all figured it out. You not only get a quest point for delivering the refugees successfully, but you get a quest point for figuring out who the spy was. Um, if that raises you up in, uh, in your category, then you get an extra card in your hand. And out of sheer gratitude, Sir Holden uh, holds a, a minor celebration in the wee hours of the morning. At this point, it's approximately three in the morning our time and uh, rewards you each for all of your hard work and service um, to, I'm sorry, I have notes here, to Angor, he presents you with chainmail of distinction. This was forged by the dwarves of Thorbarden in years past, effectively it's a magic item plus two. Uh, to Anik, uh, gives you a, presents you with a short sword of distinction. Again, it's a plus two. This was forged by the elves of Quillinesty in years past. To Torindil, of course, if he was here, he would have provided him with a loot of distinction plus two. And then Birkin gives you padded silk of distinction plus two. Rumored to have been crafted in Sylvanesty uh, by the elves. It is the finest fabric that you have ever seen in your entire life. Uh, he is very, very yes. happy and thankful for you saving his life. Thank you. The sword is so much right nicer on. than Sword Slayer. <laughs> Could be the new sword slayer. Sword slayer. Sword slayer plus. <laughs> sword sword slayer extreme. Perhaps. Slayer. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, that is all I had planned. Um, at this point, I wish Derek was here so we could um, really, you know, sort of wrap our brains around what's going to happen next. However, that letter, for all intents and purposes, seems legit. That came from the Isle of Chalice, from the Citadel of Light, by Terry Whistlefist, the kender that you were searching for in the very first adventure. She gave you a very different situation of what you all stumbled upon. Now, you were surprised, so it's possible that she's correct in her version, and your version was a manipulation. But that's up to you to decide. It's just different facts and different perspectives at this point. However... If what she says is true, she's sending five Citadel mystics down to Duntoll, and that was in a message that was supposed to be delivered up to two days ago. So that means she's already on her way, if that's true. That means you guys, if you're going to try to meet her mystics and try to defend Duntoll, have to hightail your tuchuses back the way you came as fast as possible. What is... Are the knights uh, coming with us? Is who? Are the knights coming with us? Because obviously... Yeah, uh, Sir Holden... Our um, story. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Sir Holden has detached 14 knights to join you in uh, defense of Duntoll. To be fair, this isn't a huge garrison, so there's not a lot he can send your way, but that should be well enough for... Well, we might, we might have some uh, them company uh, members coming as well, if falls went well from last week. It's possible. <laughs> or maybe not, depending on how evil you're feeling. <laughs> I reserve the right... I can plead the fifth. Plead the DM's fifth. choice. <laughs> All right, so uh, are you guys okay with uh, picking up next time and going straight down to Duntoll? Or is there anything else you want to do before that? No, no. I was, uh, well, me, I'm happy. I've also well got the knights, and um, we're getting straight back. I believe we are done in Sullis. <laughs> what do you think? Should I, ask those, 
Should I ask those Kenders if they want to come help too? No. Okay. No, forget the Kenders. No, okay. we're good. No. 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 Though that would be funny. Like having an assaulting Kender army be your fucking foray into a battle. It'd be hilarious. Um, are you familiar with Golden Axe, the game? I know it's a, yeah. like an old one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Are the Kenders similar to little elves that run about? I always thought they were little gnomes or something. Yeah, like they gnomes that run around. Stole your yeah, they're not quite like yeah. that. No. They're like they're like um, children, but they look their age and wrinkles and stuff in their face, but they're like physically they're like children, but their temperament is sort of bouncing all over the place. Insatiable curiosity. They're not afraid of anything. Even if they faced a death knight or the dark queen of God herself bent to murder them, they would just get this queasy feeling in their stomach. They wouldn't understand that it's fear unless it's the afflicted Kender of which in this adventure that we're talking about in this episode, there was an afflicted Kender that no one went to investigate that might have different information but that's already happened, so we'll, we'll conclude this episode here. Uh, thank you guys so much. I had a lot of fun. I was afraid we weren't going to get here. We <laughs> nearly derailed the whole thing. It was oh, that man. damn random encounter, man. I didn't... Ugh. But I that's, like, that's the fun of rule playing. That's, yeah. that's the whole fun of us. We, oh, we don't know. It's not a formulaic game by numbers. Yep. You know, that's, that's what makes this kind of... Uh, if you're not familiar with rule playing, that's, that's what makes us just bloggers and just can go anywhere. Absolutely. There's always time, there's always time for a quick murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's messed up. Good grief. <laughs> Messed up. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in live and watching. Let us know what you think of this adventure so far. Well, what about the character choices? Do you think Anik, should, knowing that he can't find his way anywhere, should have wandered off with a bunch of kids? Do you think that Angor was maybe acting too impulsively or maybe completely justified because that dude did try to murder someone for an apple, which is a little obscene? Let us know in the comments what you thought. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, genuinely, uh, players, you guys are awesome. Thanks for playing this game with me. I've had a lot of fun. Is there anywhere you want to promote or direct people online uh, to find you? Uh, just my, my son has a uh, Blue Mannequin 21. Oh, it's cool. just a little uh, YouTube channel that he's, he's working on, building on, and uh, he gets excited when anyone uh, comes by. So great. thank you. What about you? Uh, if you want to listen to me talk about horror movies, uh create narrated fiction and play games badly, come over to the Horrific Podcast. Uh, do live streams as well as pre-recorded videos and all stuff in between. More than welcome. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Ashley, anywhere for you? Uh, no. <laughs> I shall remain in secrecy. All right. I'm out there, but, you know. She's not really here. Ask the tree. The tree will tell you. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for this third episode of this Saga System Dragonlance 5th Age game. I'd like to thank the players for joining me and making this entertaining session. Uh, what do you all think of the Saga System? Was the character creation, was the playing of these uh, different episodes entertaining or mildly tolerable? <laughs> Let me know in the chat below. Uh, feel free to email me at info at dlsaga.com or leave a comment. I would like to take a moment and thank, uh, remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click that stupid like button if you haven't already. Do it. It's just staring at you, daring you to click it. Click it! All right. That's all. Thank you so much. Till next time. Slange of honor. No. Yes? No. Someone's getting in trouble. I can hear it. I hear someone. <laughs>